No matter what the situation, remind yourself, I have a choice. Deepak Chopra If you stopped seeing the world in terms of what you like and what you dislike, and saw things for what they truly are in themselves, you would find a great deal more peace in your life. What is not started today is never finished tomorrow. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. William James It's easy to fool someone. It's hard to convince them that they've been fooled. Do not trust your money to a person who likes to count other people's money. The most important trait of a good leader is humility. Jocko Willink. For every dissolution is either a mere dispersion of the elements into those elements again whereof everything did consist, or a change of that which is more solid into earth, and of that which is pure and subtile or spiritual into air, so that by this means nothing is lost, but all resumed again into those rational generative seeds of the universe, and this universe either after a certain period of time to lie consumed by fire, or by continual changes to be renewed, and so forever to endure. Now that solid and spiritual that we speak of, thou must not conceive it to be that very same, which at first was when thou wert born. For alas, all this that now thou art in either kind, either for matter of substance or of life, hath but two or three days ago partly from meats eaten, and partly from air breathed in, received all its influx, being the same then in no other respect than a running river, maintained by the perpetual influx and new supply of waters, is the same. That therefore which thou hast since received, not that which came from thy mother, is that which comes to change and corruption. But suppose that that for the general substance and more solid part of it should still cleave unto thee never so close, Yet what is that to the proper qualities and affections of it, by which persons are distinguished, which certainly are quite different? Have enough courage to start, and enough heart to finish. Only trust someone who can see these three things in you. The sorrow behind your smile, the love behind your anger, and the reason behind your silence. The forms are eternal and unchanging, and they are the true reality. Plato. This quote encapsulates Plato's theory of forms, which posits a realm of perfect and unchanging entities that serve as the blueprints for the world we perceive. Learn how to say it and mean it. Honesty without kindness is brutality. Kindness without honesty is manipulation. The power of creation lies in your imagination. Neville Goddard Of our desires, some are natural and necessary, others are natural but not necessary, and others are neither natural nor necessary, but are due to groundless opinion. Climb the mountain to see the world, not so that the world can see you. Be selfish with your time.
the greatest good of all is to live in accordance with virtue. Nicomachean Ethics Aristotle defines the highest good as living a virtuous life, guided by reason and moral principles. When in doubt, tell the truth. Don't give up after the first failure. Failure is not the end. It's just a detour on the road to success. Life may not be going well for you now, but as long as you are here, as long as you press forward, anything is possible. Hold on to hope. Nick Vujicic To these ever-present helps and mementos, let one more be added, ever to make a particular description and delineation, as it were, of every object that presents itself to thy mind, that thou mayest wholly and throughly contemplate it in its own proper nature, bare and naked, wholly and severally, divided into its several parts and quarters, and then by thyself in thy mind, to call both it and those things of which it doth consist, and in which it shall be resolved by their own proper true names and appellations. For there is nothing so effectual to beget true magnanimity as to be able truly and methodically to examine and consider all things that happen in this life, and so to penetrate into their natures, that at the same time this also may concur in our apprehensions. What is the true use of it? And what is the true nature of this universe to which it is useful? How much in regard of the universe may it be esteemed? How much in regard of man, a citizen of the supreme city, of which all other cities in the world are as it were but houses and families? God knows when to send you exactly what you need. Sacrifice a few years of comfort for decades of freedom. By practicing self-discipline and devotion, you can transcend the cycle of birth and death. Bhagavad Gita No matter how hard you work, you can't have everything you want. Eventually, most of us end up settling in some part of our life. You are what you believe yourself to be. Adapt and overcome. Jocko Willing. In my father, I observed his meekness, his constancy without wavering in those things, which after a due examination and deliberation he had determined. How free from all vanity he carried himself in matter of honor and dignity, as they are esteemed, his laboriousness and assiduity, his readiness to hear any man that had ought to say tending to any common good, how generally and impartially he would give every man his due his skill and knowledge, when rigor or extremity, or when remissness or moderation was in season, how he did abstain from all unchaste love of youths, his moderate condescending to other men's occasions as an ordinary man, neither absolutely requiring of his friends, that they should wait upon him at his ordinary meals, nor that they should of necessity accompany him in his journeys and that whensoever any business upon some necessary occasions was to be put off and omitted before it could be ended, he was ever found when he went about it again, the same man that he was before, his accurate examination of things in consultations and patient hearing of others. He would not hastily give over the search of the matter as one easy to be satisfied with sudden notions and apprehensions, his care to preserve his friends, how neither at any time he would carry himself towards them with disdainful neglect, 
and grow weary of them, nor yet at any time be madly fond of them. His contented mind in all things, his cheerful countenance, his care to foresee things afar off, and to take order for the least, without any noise or clamor. Moreover, how all acclamations and flattery were repressed by him, how carefully he observed all things necessary to the government and kept an account of the common expenses, and how patiently he did abide that he was reprehended by some for this his strict and rigid kind of dealing, how he was neither a superstitious worshipper of the gods nor an ambitious pleaser of men or studious of popular applause, but sober in all things, and everywhere observant of that which was fitting, no effector of novelties, in those things which conduced to his ease and convenience, plenty whereof his fortune did afford him, without pride and bragging, yet with all freedom and liberty, so that as he did freely enjoy them without any anxiety or affectation when they were present, so when absent he found no want of them, Moreover, that he was never commended by any man as either a learned acute man or an obsequious officious man or a fine orator, but as a ripe mature man, a perfect sound man, one that could not endure to be flattered, able to govern both himself and others. Moreover, how much he did honor all true philosophers without upbraiding those that were not so. His sociableness, his gracious and delightful conversation, but never unto satiety, his care of his body within bounds and measure, not as one that desired to live long or overstudious of neatness and elegancy, and yet not as one that did not regard it, so that through his own care and providence he seldom needed any inward physics or outward applications, but especially how ingeniously he would yield to any that had obtained any peculiar faculty, as either eloquence or the knowledge of the laws, or of ancient customs, or the like, and how he concurred with them in his best care and endeavor that every one of them might, in his kind, for that wherein he excelled, be regarded and esteemed. And although he did all things carefully after the ancient customs of his forefathers, yet even of this was he not desirous that men should take notice that he did imitate ancient customs, Again, how he was not easily moved and tossed up and down, but loved to be constant, both in the same places and businesses, and how after his great fits of headache he would return fresh and vigorous to his wonted affairs. Again, that secrets he neither had many nor often, and such only as concerned public matters, his discretion and moderation, in exhibiting of the public sights and shows for the pleasure and pastime of the people, in public buildings, congieries, and the like. In all these things, having a respect unto men only as men, and to the equity of the things themselves, and not unto the glory that might follow, never want to use the baths at unseasonable hours, no builder, never curious or solicitous, either about his meat, or about the workmanship, or color of his clothes, or about anything that belonged to external beauty. In all his conversation, far from all inhumanity, all boldness and incivility, all greediness and impetuosity, never doing anything with such earnestness and intention that a man could say of him that he did sweat about it, but contrarywise, all things distinctly, as at leisure, without trouble, orderly, soundly, and agreeably. A man might have applied that to him, which is recorded of Socrates, that he knew how to want and to enjoy those things, in the want whereof most men show themselves weak, and in the fruition, intemperate, but to hold out firm and constant, and to keep within the compass of true moderation and sobriety in either estate, is proper to a man who hath a perfect and invincible soul, such as he showed himself in the sickness of Maximus. There are two wolves fighting inside all of us. The first one is evil. The second one is good. Which wolf will win? The one you feed. In the end, 
everything will be okay. If it's not okay, it's not yet the end. Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master. Epictetus Listen to the people who tell you what you don't want to hear. Friendship is one mind in two bodies. Anything you really want, you can attain if you really go after it. Wayne Dyer The Lacedaemonians at their public spectacles were wont to appoint seats and forms for their strangers in the shadow. They themselves were content to sit anywhere. You can always earn money. It's not a big deal. Your world is not going to end because you don't have a fixed income. Something else will work out. We fall, we break, we fail, but then we rise, we heal, we overcome. We are like many pellets of incense falling on the same altar. Some collapse sooner, others later, but it makes no difference. Marcus Aurelius History will be kind to you because you intend to write it. Given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. The wound is the place where the light enters you. Rumi Let it be thy earnest and incessant care as a Roman and a man to perform whatsoever it is that thou art about. With true and unfeigned gravity, natural affection, freedom and justice, and as for all other cares and imaginations, how thou mayst ease thy mind of them, which thou shalt do, if thou shalt go about every action as thy last action, free from all vanity, all passionate and willful aberration from reason, and from all hypocrisy and self-love and dislike of those things which by the fates or appointment of God have happened unto thee. Thou seest that those things, which for a man to hold on in a prosperous course, and to live a divine life, are requisite and necessary, are not many. For the gods will require no more of any man, that shall but keep and observe these things. No one is too busy, it's only a matter of priorities. Do not let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. The state exists for the sake of the good life. Aristotle This quote highlights Aristotle's belief that the purpose of government is to provide its citizens with the conditions necessary for a flourishing life. A friendship founded on business is better than a business founded on friendship. Do not allow anyone to treat you badly just because you love them. The kingdom of God is available to you in the here and the now. But the question is whether you are available to the kingdom. Our practice is to make ourselves ready for the kingdom so that it can manifest in the here and the now. You don't need to die in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. In fact, you have to be truly alive in order to do so. Tish Nathan In my father, I observed his meekness, his constancy without wavering in those things, which after a due examination and deliberation he had determined. 
how free from all vanity he carried himself in matter of honor and dignity, as they are esteemed, his laboriousness and assiduity, his readiness to hear any man that had ought to say tending to any common good, how generally and impartially he would give every man his due, his skill and knowledge, when rigor or extremity, or when remissness or moderation was in season, how he did abstain from all unchaste love of youths, his moderate condescending to other men's occasions as an ordinary man, neither absolutely requiring of his friends, that they should wait upon him at his ordinary meals, nor that they should of necessity accompany him in his journeys, and that whensoever any business upon some necessary occasions was to be put off and omitted before it could be ended, he was ever found when he went about it again, the same man that he was before, his accurate examination of things in consultations and patient hearing of others. He would not hastily give over the search of the matter as one easy to be satisfied with sudden notions and apprehensions. His care to preserve his friends, how neither at any time he would carry himself towards them with disdainful neglect and grow weary of them, nor yet at any time be madly fond of them. His contented mind in all things his cheerful countenance, his care to foresee things afar off and to take order for the least without any noise or clamor. Moreover, how all acclamations and flattery were repressed by him, how carefully he observed all things necessary to the government and kept an account of the common expenses, and how patiently he did abide that he was reprehended by some for this his strict and rigid kind of dealing how he was neither a superstitious worshipper of the gods, nor an ambitious pleaser of men, or studious of popular applause, but sober in all things, and everywhere observant of that which was fitting, no effector of novelties, in those things which conduced to his ease and convenience, plenty whereof his fortune did afford him, without pride and bragging, yet with all freedom and liberty, so that as he did freely enjoy them without any anxiety or affectation when they were present, so when absent he found no want of them. Moreover, that he was never commended by any man as either a learned acute man, or an obsequious officious man, or a fine orator, but as a ripe mature man, a perfect sound man, one that could not endure to be flattered, able to govern both himself and others, Moreover, how much he did honor all true philosophers without upbraiding those that were not so. His sociableness, his gracious and delightful conversation, but never unto satiety, his care of his body within bounds and measure, not as one that desired to live long or overstudious of neatness and elegancy, and yet not as one that did not regard it, so that through his own care and providence he seldom needed any inward physics or outward applications but especially how ingeniously he would yield to any that had obtained any peculiar faculty, as either eloquence, or the knowledge of the laws, or of ancient customs, or the like, and how he concurred with them, in his best care and endeavor that every one of them might, in his kind, for that wherein he excelled, be regarded and esteemed. And although he did all things carefully after the ancient customs of his forefathers, Yet even of this was he not desirous that men should take notice, that he did imitate ancient customs. Again, how he was not easily moved and tossed up and down, but loved to be constant, both in the same places and businesses, and how after his great fits of headache he would return fresh and vigorous to his wonted affairs. Again, that secrets he neither had many nor often, and such only as concerned public matters, his discretion and moderation, in exhibiting of the public sights and shows for the pleasure and pastime of the people, in public buildings, congieries, and the like. In all these things, having a respect unto men only as men, and to the equity of the things themselves, and not unto the glory that might follow, never wont to use the baths at unseasonable hours. No builder, never curious or solicitous, either about his meat, or about the workmanship, 
or color of his clothes, or about anything that belonged to external beauty. In all his conversation, far from all inhumanity, all boldness and incivility, all greediness and impetuosity, never doing anything with such earnestness and intention that a man could say of him that he did sweat about it, but contrarywise, all things distinctly, as at leisure, without trouble, orderly, soundly, and agreeably. A man might have applied that to him, which is recorded of Socrates, that he knew how to want and to enjoy those things, in the want whereof most men show themselves weak, and in the fruition intemperate, but to hold out firm and constant, and to keep within the compass of true moderation and sobriety in either estate, is proper to a man who hath a perfect and invincible soul, such as he showed himself in the sickness of Maximus. If you lack faith, then existence does not believe in you. If someone is trying to bring you down, they are already below you. Have patience. All things are difficult before they become easy. Sa'adi Do not spend time beating on a wall hoping to transform it into a door. If you are alone for a long time, soon you will accept loneliness. You will never know your potential if you are afraid to be alone. When you want to do something, close your eyes, imagine yourself, and feel it. Jay Shetty Bodily pleasure does not increase when the pain of want has been removed. After that, it only admits of variation. The limit of mental pleasure, however, is reached when we reflect on these bodily pleasures and their related emotions, which used to cause the mind the greatest alarms. Everyone is going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. In every success story, you will find someone who has made a courageous decision. Wheresoever you go, go with all your heart, Confucius. We must bring our own light to the darkness. Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. Freedom is not about getting rid of anything. It is about being who you are. Muji. Let it not be in any man's power to say truly of thee that thou art not truly simple or sincere and open or not good. Let him be deceived, whosoever he be, that shall have any such opinion of thee. For all this doth depend of thee. For who is it that should hinder thee from being either truly simple or good? Do thou only resolve rather not to live, than not to be such? For indeed neither doth it stand with reason that he should live that is not such. What then is it that may upon this present occasion, according to best reason and discretion, either be said or done? For whatsoever it be, it is in thy power either to do it, or to say it, and therefore seek not any pretenses, as though thou wert hindered. Thou wilt never cease groaning and complaining, until such time as that, what pleasure is unto the voluptuous, be unto thee, to do in everything that presents itself, whatsoever may be done conformably and agreeably, to the proper constitution of man, or to man as he is a man. For thou must account that pleasure, whatsoever it be, that thou mayest do according to thine own nature. And to do this, every place will fit thee. Unto the cylindrus, or roller, 
it is not granted to move everywhere according to its own proper motion, as neither unto the water, nor unto the fire, nor unto any other thing, that either is merely natural, or natural and sensitive, but not rational for many things, there be that can hinder their operations. But of the mind and understanding this is the proper privilege, that according to its own nature, and as it will itself, it can pass through every obstacle that it finds, and keep straight on forwards. Stay patient, the best things happen unexpectedly. Never waste your time with explanations. People only hear what they want to hear. Having the fewest wants, I am nearest to the gods. Socrates If you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hopes. If they spit at you behind your back, it means you're ahead of them. Discipline equals freedom. Jocko Willink Where without any change in circumstances, the things held to be just by law are seen not to correspond with the concept of justice in actual practice. Such laws are not really just. But wherever the laws have ceased to be advantageous because of a change in circumstances, in that case the laws were for that time just when they were advantageous for the mutual dealings of the citizens, and subsequently ceased to be just when they were no longer advantageous. It is better to have less thunder in the mouth and more lightning in the hand. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. Anything that can be prevented, taken away, or coerced is not a person's own, but those things that can't be blocked are their own. Epictetus Patience is power. You give power to someone you blame for your problems. You do not have to be concerned about your journey. You have already arrived. Eckhart Tolle No pleasure is a bad thing in itself, but the things which produce certain pleasures entail disturbances many times greater than the pleasures themselves. Learn as if you were to live forever. Stop doing what is easy or popular. Start doing what is right. Pleasures, when they go beyond a certain limit, are but punishments. Marcus Aurelius Time flies. One day you are 30, the next you are 50. Plan now for what you want 50 to look like. You will find the key to success under the alarm clock. A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thoughts. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusions. Alan Watts What dost thou desire? To live long? What? To enjoy the operations of a sensitive soul? Or of the appetitive faculty? Or wouldst thou grow? and then decrease again? Wouldst thou long be able to talk, to think and reason with thyself? 
which of all these seems unto thee a worthy object of thy desire? Now if of all these thou doest find that they be but little worth in themselves, proceed on unto the last, which is in all things to follow God and reason. But for a man to grieve that by death he shall be deprived of any of these things, is both against God and reason. He who flatters a man is his enemy. He who tells him of his faults is his maker. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Three things cannot be long hidden, the sun, the moon, and the truth, Buddha. Life is not fair, but it's still good. Accept criticism, but never accept disrespect. The mind is a great instrument if used rightly. Nisargadatta Maharaj Mindset Mind over matter is a powerful expression. Your ability to consciously control your mindset is what makes you mentally tough and ready for life's challenges. The secret to achieving this resilient state lies in taking control of your thoughts and allowing your thoughts to control your behaviors, not the other way around. Your ability to take control of your emotional responses and live a stoic-inspired life is the secret to success, to your happiness, and to your improved well-being. When you are able to see situations as opportunities and emotional responses as conscious choices, when you realize things don't happen to you but rather with you, your outlook completely changes. How you see your situation affects and influences how you feel about that situation. You are not merely a byproduct of your circumstances. You are a choosing being who has the ability to determine your emotional responses, which in turn shapes how you view the world, yourselves, and others. But learning to change your perspectives takes practice. Practice which will in turn help increase your self-confidence. By practicing cognitive restructuring, you can retrain your brain and create new habits that will make you the master of any situation. When choosing how you feel and react becomes your choice, you will feel more in control. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. A salary is the drug they give you to forget your dreams. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. Seneca Don't devalue yourself because they didn't value you. It's okay. They are only human. What people say when they are angry aren't things they mean. They regret it often. Forgive angry people. Lack of direction, not lack of time, is the problem. We all have 24-hour days. Zig Ziglar Under, above, and about are the motions of the elements. But the motion of virtue is none of those motions, but is somewhat more excellent and divine, whose way to speed and prosper in it must be through a way that is not easily comprehended. Life is far from over, but it's very short too. Win in your mind, and you will win in your reality.
He who speaks without modesty will find it difficult to make his words good. Confucius All we are is the result of all we have thought. Never be afraid of being different. Be afraid of being the same as everyone else. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Jay Shetty From Alexander the Grammarian, to be unreprovable myself, and not reproachfully to reprehend any man for a barbarism or a solecism or any false pronunciation, but dexterously by way of answer, or testimony or confirmation of the same matter, taking no notice of the word, to utter it as it should have been spoken, or by some other such close and indirect admonition, handsomely and civilly to tell him of it. Excuses make today easier, but tomorrow harder. Discipline makes today hard, but tomorrow easier. Never put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. One beam, no matter how big, cannot support an entire house on its own. Chinese proverb. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Love is not enough to make a happy, lasting relationship. Having faith, beliefs, and convictions is a great thing, but your life is measured by the actions you take based upon them. Nick Vujicic Some things hasten to be, and others to be no more. And even whatsoever now is, some part thereof hath already perished. Perpetual fluxes and alterations renew the world, as the perpetual course of time doth make the age of the world, of itself infinite, to appear always fresh and new. In such a flux and course of all things, what of these things that hasten so fast away should any man regard? since among all there is not any that a man may fasten and fix upon. As if a man would settle his affection upon some ordinary sparrow living by him, who is no sooner seen than out of sight. For we must not think otherwise of our lives than as a mere exhalation of blood or of an ordinary respiration of air. For what in our common apprehension is to breathe in the air and to breathe it out again, which we do daily. So much is it, and no more, at once to breathe out all thy respirative faculty into that common air, from whence but lately, as being but from yesterday, and today, thou didst first breathe it in, and with it life. Expect nothing. Appreciate everything. Be grateful for the little things in your life, to find inner peace. Remove the clowns from your life before you become one. The advancement and diffusion of knowledge is the only guardian of true liberty. James Madison Three may keep a secret if two of them are dead. Don't leave someone to teach them a lesson. Leave because you learned yours. Circumstances do not make a man, they reveal him. Wayne Dyer In my sickness, saith Epicurus of himself, my discourses were not concerning the nature of my disease, 
neither was that to them that came to visit me the subject of my talk, but in the consideration and contemplation of that which was of a special weight and moment was all my time bestowed and spent, and among others in this very thing, how my mind, by a natural and unavoidable sympathy, partaking in some sort with the present indisposition of my body, might nevertheless keep herself free from trouble and in present possession of her own proper happiness. Neither did I leave the ordering of my body to the physicians altogether to do with me what they would, as though I expected any great matter from them, or as though I thought it a matter of such great consequence by their means to recover my health. For my present estate, methought, liked me very well, and gave me good content. Whether therefore in sickness, if thou chance to sicken, or in what other kind of extremity soever, endeavor thou also to be in thy mind so affected, as he doth report of himself, not to depart from thy philosophy for anything that can befall thee, nor to give ear to the discourses of silly people and mere naturalists. Man's nature is evil. Goodness is the result of conscious activity. Don't let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. You are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. C.S. Lewis Circumstances make man not man's circumstances. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Miracles come in moments. Be ready and willing. Wayne Dyer To look back upon things of former ages, as upon the manifold changes and conversions of several monarchies and commonwealths, we may also foresee things future, for they shall all be of the same kind. Neither is it possible that they should leave the tune, or break the concert that is now begun, as it were, by these things that are now done and brought to pass in the world. It comes all to one, therefore, whether a man be a spectator of the things of this life but forty years, or whether he see them ten thousand years together, for what shall he see more? And as for those parts that came from the earth, they shall return unto the earth again, and those that came from heaven, they also shall return unto those heavenly places. Whether it be a mere dissolution and unbinding of the manifold intricacies and entanglements of the confused atoms, or some such dispersion of the simple and incorruptible elements. With meats and drinks and divers' charms, they seek to divert the channel, that they might not die. Yet must we needs endure that blast of wind that cometh from above, though we toil and labor never so much. Do not let yesterday take up too much of today. The only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. The unexamined life is not worth living, Socrates. Before something great happens, everything falls apart. One always has enough time if one applies it well. The real battle is in your mind. That's where it's won. David Goggins That whensoever thou doest take on grievously or makest great woe, little doest thou remember then that a man's life is but for a moment of time, and that within a while we shall all be in our graves. Seventhly, that it is not the sins and transgressions themselves that trouble us properly, 
for they have their existence in their minds and understandings only that commit them, but our own opinions concerning those sins. Remove then, and be content to part with that conceit of thine that it is a grievous thing, and thou hast removed thine anger. But how should I remove it? How? Reasoning with thyself that it is not shameful, for if that which is shameful be not the only true evil that is, thou also wilt be driven, whilst thou doest follow the common instinct of nature, to avoid that which is evil, to commit many unjust things, and to become a thief, and anything that will make to the attainment of thy intended worldly ends. Eighthly, how many things may and do oftentimes follow upon such fits of anger and grief, far more grievous in themselves than those very things which we are so grieved or angry for. Ninthly, that meekness is a thing unconquerable, if it be true and natural, and not affected or hypocritical. For how shall even the most fierce and malicious that thou shalt conceive be able to hold on against thee, if thou shalt still continue meek and loving unto him? And that even at that time when he is about to do thee wrong, thou shalt be well disposed and in good temper, with all meekness to teach him, and to instruct him better? As for example, my son, we were not born for this, to hurt and annoy one another. It will be thy hurt, not mine, my son. And so to show him forcibly and fully, that it is so in very deed, and that neither bees do it one to another, nor any other creatures that are naturally sociable. But this thou must do, not scoffingly, not by way of exprobation, but tenderly without any harshness of words. Neither must thou do it by way of exercise or ostentation, that they that are by and hear thee may admire thee, but so always that nobody be privy to it, but himself alone. Yea, though there be more present at the same time, these nine particular heads as so many gifts from the muses, see that thou remember well, and begin one day, whilst thou art yet alive, to be a man indeed. But on the other side thou must take heed, as much to flatter them, as to be angry with them, for both are equally uncharitable, and equally hurtful. And in thy passions, take it presently to thy consideration, that to be angry is not the part of a man, but that to be meek and gentle, as it savors of more humanity, so of more manhood, that in this there is strength and nerves, or vigor and fortitude, whereof anger and indignation is altogether void, for the nearer everything is unto unpassionateness, the nearer it is unto power, and as grief doth proceed from weakness, so doth anger. For both, both he that is angry and that grieveth, have received a wound, and cowardly have, as it were, yielded themselves unto their affections. If thou wilt have a tenth also, receive this tenth gift from Hercules the guide and leader of the muses. That is a madman's part, to look that there should be no wicked men in the world, because it is impossible. Now for a man to brook well enough, that there should be wicked men in the world, but not to endure that any should transgress against himself, is against all equity and if you can explain it to a six-year-old you understand it yourself whoever undertaking a business hurries too quickly to achieve a result will do nothing the beginning is the most important part of the work Plato When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. In the face of adversity, remember that diamonds are made under pressure. Leadership is not about being in charge. It is about taking care of those in your charge. Jocko Willing Look in, let not either the proper quality or the true worth of anything pass thee.
before thou hast fully apprehended it. While we wait for life, life passes. To reach somewhere, you need to leave something behind. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Bhagavad Gita People want you to succeed, but not more than themselves. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. We live in an external world that values, looks, status, and appearances, but we neglect our inner world. Jay Shetty The sun seemeth to be shed abroad, and indeed it is diffused but not effused. For that diffusion of it is a tasis or an extension. For therefore are the beams of it called actines from the word actiniste, to be stretched out and extended. Now what a sunbeam is, thou mayest know if thou observe the light of the sun, when through some narrow hole it pierceth into some room that is dark, for it is always in a direct line, and as by any solid body, that it meets with in the way that is not penetrable by air, it is divided and abrupted, and yet neither slides off or falls down, but stayeth there nevertheless. Such must the diffusion in the mind be, not an effusion, but an extension. What obstacles and impediments soever she meeteth within her way, she must not violently, and by way of an impetuous onset light upon them, neither must she fall down, but she must stand and give light unto that which doth admit of it. For as for that which doth not, it is its own fault and loss, if it bereave itself of her light. No one is going to figure out your life. It's your responsibility. Life is too short to hate anyone. As a matter of self-perseveration, a man needs good friends or ardent enemies, for the former instruct him, and the latter take him to task. Diogenes Prosperity is not without many fears and disasters, and adversity is not without comforts and hopes. Don't give up on something you really want. It's difficult to wait, but it's more difficult to regret. The sense of I am is the root of all experience. It is the essence of being. Nisargadatta Maharaj Why should any of these things that happen externally so much distract thee? Give thyself leisure to learn some good thing and cease roving and wandering to and fro. Thou must also take heed of another kind of wandering, for they are idle in their actions, who toil and labor in this life and have no certain scope to which to direct all their motions and desires. Never take anything personally. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality. It's okay to just chill. No man ever steps in the same river twice. For it is not the same river, and he is not the same man. Heraclitus Never be afraid to express vulnerability. It shows strength. To be well is a part of becoming well. Your greatest asset is your earning ability. Your greatest resource is your time. Brian Tracy Now that thou hast taken these names upon thee of good, 
modest, true, of emphron, sumphron, upperfron, take heed lest at any times by doing anything that is contrary, thou be but improperly so called, and lose thy right to these appellations, or if thou do, return unto them again with all possible speed. And remember that the word emphron notes unto thee an intent and intelligent consideration of every object that presents itself unto thee without distraction. And the word sumphron, a ready and contented acceptation of whatsoever by the appointment of the common nature, happens unto thee. And the word uperfron, a superextension, or a transcendent and outreaching disposition of thy mind, whereby it passeth by all bodily pains and pleasures, honor and credit, death and whatsoever is of the same nature as matters of absolute indifferency, and in no wise to be stood upon by a wise man. These then, if inviolably thou shalt observe, and shalt not be ambitious to be so called by others, both thou thyself shalt become a new man, and thou shalt begin a new life. For to continue such as hitherto thou hast been, to undergo those distractions and distempers, as thou must needs for such a life as hitherto thou hast lived, is the part of one that is very foolish, and is over-fond of his life, whom a man might compare to one of those half-eaten wretches, matched in the amphitheatre with wild beasts, who as full as they are all the body over with wounds and blood, desire for a great favour that they may be reserved till the next day. Then also, and in the same estate, to be exposed to the same nails and teeth as before. Say please and thank you often. One of the fastest ways to improve your life is to simply do what you said you were going to do. He who is not contented with what he has would not be contented with what he would like to have. Socrates Sometimes being alone is the best medicine to your soul. The first step to getting anywhere is deciding you're not willing to stay where you are. If you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you'll spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is, to go on doing things you don't like doing. Alan Watts God beholds our minds and understandings bare and naked from these material vessels and outsides and all earthly dross. For with his simple and pure understanding, he pierceth into our inmost and purest parts, which from his, as it were by a water pipe and channel, first flowed and issued. This, if thou also shalt use to do, thou shalt rid thyself of that manifold luggage wherewith thou art round about encumbered. For he that does regard neither his body, nor his clothing, nor his dwelling, nor any such external furniture, must needs gain unto himself great rest and ease. Three things there be in all, which thou doest consist of, thy body, thy life, and thy mind. Of these the two former are so far forth thine, as that thou art bound to take care for them, but the third alone is that which is properly thine. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. The most important step a man can take is the next one. It's always the next one. An idea that is developed and put into action is more important than an idea that exists only as an idea. Buddha Don't waste your money. You can earn it again. If you miss the moment, it can never be returned. Live life with opened eyes, ears, and heart.
If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Zig Ziglar Thou hast no time nor opportunity to read. What then? Hast thou not time and opportunity to exercise thyself, not to wrong thyself, to strive against all carnal pleasures and pains, and to get the upper hand of them, to contemn honor and vainglory, and not only, not to be angry with them, whom towards thee thou doest find unsensible and unthankful, but also to have a care of them still, and of their welfare. Just because you are going through hell right now doesn't mean you will never smile again. Do not think you are destined to live forever. You are mortal and your time is limited. Use it wisely. If you accomplish something good with hard work, the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. Musonius Rufus Never lose your sense of humor. Laughter is the best medicine for the soul. Remember that your children are not your own, but are lent to you by the Creator. The sense of I is the most basic experience and the root of all experiences. Nisargadatta Maharaj That logic is necessary. When one of those who were present said, Persuade me that logic is necessary. He replied, Do you wish me to prove this to you? The answer was, Yes. Then I must use a demonstrative form of speech. This was granted. How then will you know if I am cheating you by argument? The man was silent. Do you see, said Epictetus, that you yourself are admitting that logic is necessary? If without it you cannot know so much as this, whether logic is necessary or not necessary. Many people die at 25 and aren't buried until they are 75. You can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. A man is not finished when he is defeated. He is finished when he quits. Richard Nixon If you want to see the world change, start with yourself. People often confuse stress with responsibility. That mountain you've been carrying, you were only supposed to climb. The self is the unchanging reality amidst the changing world. Papaji. Thou mayest always speed if thou wilt but make choice of the right way. If in the course both of thine opinions and actions, thou wilt observe a true method. These two things be common to the souls, as of God, so of men, and of every reasonable creature, first that in their own proper work they cannot be hindered by anything, and secondly, that their happiness doth consist in a disposition to, and in the practice of righteousness, and that in these their desire is terminated. Never tolerate disrespect, not even from yourself. If you knew how rarely we are understood correctly, you would be silent more often. A people that values its privileges above its principles soon loses both. Dwight D. Eisenhower
To be always fortunate and to pass through life with a soul that has never known sorrow is to be ignorant of one half of nature. If someone tells you you can't, they're showing you their limits, not yours. In true love there is no pride, Thich Nhat Hanh. As several members in one body united, so are reasonable creatures in a body divided and dispersed, all made and prepared for one common operation. And this thou shalt apprehend the better, if thou shalt use thyself often to say to thyself, I am Melus, or a member of the mass and body of reasonable substances. But if thou shalt say, I am Merus, or a part, thou dost not yet love men from thy heart. The joy that thou takest in the exercise of bounty is not yet grounded upon a due ratiocination and right apprehension of the nature of things. Thou dost exercise it as yet upon this ground barely, as a thing convenient and fitting, not as doing good to thyself when thou dost good unto others. Progress is impossible without change. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Every morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. Buddha Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. You don't notice your progress in life because you are always raising the bar. The universe is a reflection of your own consciousness. Deepak Chopra Remember that the insult does not come from the person who abuses you or hits you, but from your judgment that such people are insulting you. Therefore, whenever someone provokes you, be aware that it is your own opinion that provokes you. Try, therefore, in the first place, not to be carried away by your impressions, for if you can gain time and delay, you will more easily control yourself. Our plans miscarry because they have no aim. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the favorable wind. Judge no one, just improve yourself. There is truth in wine and children. Plato, Phaedrus. Love is an ideal thing, marriage a real thing. Where there is marriage without love, there will be love without marriage. The world is a mirror for each one of us, reflecting our own beliefs and expectations. Deepak Chopra to or against those who obstinately persist in what they have determined. When some persons have heard these words that a man ought to be constant, and that the will is naturally free and not subject to compulsion, but that all other things are subject to hindrance, to slavery, and are in the power of others, they suppose that they ought without deviation to abide by everything which they have determined. But in the first place, that which has been determined ought to be sound. I require tone in the body, but such as exists in a healthy body, in an athletic body. But if it is plain to me that you have the tone of a frenzied man and you boast of it, I shall say to you, 
man, seek the physician. This is not tone, but atony. In a different way, something of the same kind is felt by those who listen to these discourses in a wrong manner, which was the case with one of my companions, who for no reason resolved to starve himself to death. I heard of it when it was the third day of his abstinence from food, and I went to inquire what had happened. I have resolved, he said, but still tell me what it was which induced you to resolve. For if you have resolved rightly, we shall sit with you and assist you to depart. But if you have made an unreasonable resolution, change your mind. We ought to keep to our determinations. What are you doing, man? We ought to keep not to all our determinations, but to those which are right. For if you are now persuaded that it is right, do not change your mind if you think fit, but persist and say, we ought to abide by our determinations. Will you not make the beginning and lay the foundation in an inquiry whether the determination is sound or not sound, and so then build on it firmness and security? But if you lay a rotten and ruinous foundation, will not your miserable little building fall down the sooner, the more and the stronger are the materials which you shall lay on it? Without any reason would you withdraw from us out of life a man who is a friend and a companion, a citizen of the same city, both the great and the small city. Then, while you are committing murder and destroying a man who has done no wrong, do you say that you ought to abide by your determinations? And if it ever in any way came into your head to kill me, ought you to abide by your determinations? Now this man was with difficulty persuaded to change his mind, but it is impossible to convince some persons at present, so that I seem now to know what I did not know before, the meaning of the common saying, that you can neither persuade nor break a fool. May it never be my lot to have a wise fool for my friend. Nothing is more untractable. I am determined, the man says. Madmen are also, but the more firmly they form a judgment on things which do not exist, the more elabor they require. Will you not act like a sick man and call in the physician? I am sick, master. Help me. Consider what I must do. It is my duty to obey you. So it is here also. I know not what I ought to do, but I am come to learn. Not so, but speak to me about other things. Upon this I have determined. What other things? For what is greater and more useful than for you to be persuaded that it is not sufficient to have made your determination and not to change it? This is the tone of madness, not of health. I will die if you compel me to this. Why, man? What has happened? I have determined. I have had a lucky escape that you have not determined to kill me. I take no money. Why? I have determined. Be assured that with the very tone which you now use in refusing to take, there is nothing to hinder you at some time from inclining without reason to take money and then saying, I have determined. As in a distempered body, Subject to defluxions, the humor inclines sometimes to these parts and then to those. So too a sickly soul knows not which way to incline. But if to this inclination and movement there is added a tone, then the evil becomes past help and cure. Do what no one else can do, and you will become what no one else can become. Rule your life with your mind, not with your feelings. Every bad decision we have made in life, there was more emotion in it than there was mind. Every single one. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha If a man is as wise as a serpent, he can afford to be as harmless as a dove.
a back phase of your life can start at any time. Most of the time you have to swallow the pain and learn to grow up by yourself. Your life is the space in which all things happen. Eckhart Tolle Do not be troubled by thoughts such as these. I will be valued by no one my whole life long, a nobody everywhere. For if lacking value is something bad, which it is, you cannot be involved in anything bad through other people any more than you can be involved in anything disgraceful. Is it any business of yours then to acquire status or to be invited to a banquet? Certainly not. How then can this be regarded as lacking value? And how will you be a nobody everywhere when all you have to be is a somebody concerning those things that are in your power with respect to which you can be someone of the greatest value Two, but my friends, you say, will lack support. What do you mean, lack support? Certainly they won't get much cash from you, neither will you make them Roman citizens. Who told you then that these things are amongst those that are in our power, and not the business of other people? And who can give to others things they do not have themselves? Three, get some money then, someone says so that we can have some too. If I can get it whilst also preserving my self-respect, my trustworthiness, my magnanimity, show me how, and I will get it. But if you ask me to forsake those things that are good, and my own, in order that you may acquire those things that are not good, see for yourself how unfair and thoughtless you are. Besides, what would you rather have, money? or a friend who is trustworthy and has self-respect. Therefore help me towards this end, and do not ask me to do anything by which I will lose those very qualities. 4. But my country, you say, as far as it depends on me, will be without my help. The Handbook of Epictetus 7, Revised, 2003, 10-10 I ask again, what help do you mean? It will not have colonnades and bathhouses on your account. But what does that mean? For neither is it provided with shoes by a smith, nor weapons by a shoemaker. It is enough if everyone properly attends to their own business. But if you were to provide it with another trustworthy citizen who has self-respect, would that not be of use to your country? Yes. Well then, you also cannot be useless to it. 5. What place then, you ask, will I have in the community? that which you may have whilst also preserving your trustworthiness and self-respect. But if, by wishing to be useful, you throw away these qualities, of what use can you be to your community if you become shameless and untrustworthy? Prayers do not change the world, but prayers change people, and people change the world. Lost time is never found again. There is only one good knowledge and one evil ignorance, Socrates. Do not let yesterday use up too much of today. Always save a little money every week or month. Nothing gives you happiness like a financial buffer, believe it or not. You can never earn in the outside world more than you earn in your own mind. Brian Tracy What is the nature of the good? God is beneficial, but the good also is beneficial. It is consistent, then, that where the nature of God is, there also the nature of the good should be. What, then, is the nature of God? Flesh? Certainly not. An estate in land? By no means. Fame? No. Is it intelligence, knowledge, right reason? Yes. 
Herein then simply seek the nature of the good, for I suppose that you do not seek it in a plant. No. Do you seek it in an irrational animal? No. If then you seek it in a rational animal, why do you still seek it anywhere except in the superiority of rational over irrational animals? Now plants have not even the power of using appearances, and for this reason you do not apply the term good to them. The good then requires the use of appearances. Does it require this use only? For if you say that it requires this use only, say that the good, and that happiness and unhappiness are in irrational animals also. But you do not say this, and you do right. For if they possess even in the highest degree the use of appearances, yet they have not the faculty of understanding the use of appearances. And there is good reason for this. For they exist for the purpose of serving others, and they exercise no superiority. For the ass, I suppose, does not exist for any superiority over others? No. But because we had need of a back which is able to bear something, and in truth we had need also of his being able to walk, and for this reason he received also the faculty of making use of appearances, for otherwise he would not have been able to walk. And here then the matter stopped. For if he had also received the faculty of comprehending the use of appearances, it is plain that consistently with reason he would not then have been subjected to us, nor would he have done us these services, but he would have been equal to us and like to us. Will you not then seek the nature of good in the rational animal? For if it is not there, you not choose to say that it exists in any other thing. What then? Are not plants and animals also the works of God? They are but they are not superior things, nor yet parts of the gods. But you are a superior thing. You are a portion separated from the deity. You have in yourself a certain portion of him. Why then are you ignorant of your own noble descent? Why do you not know whence you came? Will you not remember when you are eating, who you are who eat and whom you feed? When you are in conjunction with a woman, will you not remember who you are who do this thing? When you are in social intercourse, when you are exercising yourself, when you are engaged in discussion, know you not that you are nourishing a god, that you are exercising a god? Wretch, you are carrying about a god with you, and you know it not. Do you think that I mean some god of silver or of gold and external? You carry him within yourself and you perceive not that you are polluting him by impure thoughts and dirty deeds. And if an image of God were present, you would not dare to do any of the things which you are doing. But when God himself is present within and sees all and hears all, you are not ashamed of thinking such things and doing such things, ignorant as you are of your own nature and subject to the anger of God. Then why do we fear when we are sending a young man from the school into active life, lest he should do anything improperly, eat improperly, have improper intercourse with women, and lest the rags in which he is wrapped should debase him, lest fine garments should make him proud? This youth does not know his own God. He knows not with whom he sets out. But can we endure when he says, I wish I had you with me. Have you not God with you? And do you seek for any other when you have him? Or will God tell you anything else than this? If you were a statue of Phidias, either Athena or Zeus, you would think broth of yourself and of the artist. And if you had any understanding, you would try to do nothing unworthy of him who made you or of yourself, and try not to appear in an unbecoming dress to those who look on you. But now because Zeus has made you, for this reason do you care not how you shall appear? And yet, is the artist like the artist in the other? Or the work in the one case like the other? And what work of an artist, for instance, has in itself the faculties which the artist shows in making it? Is it not marble or bronze or gold or ivory? 
and the Athena of Phidias, when she has once extended the hand and received in it the figure of victory, stands in that attitude forever. But the works of God have power of motion. They breathe. They have the faculty of using the appearances of things and the power of examining them. Being the work of such an artist, do you dishonor him? And what shall I say? Not only that he made you, but also entrusted you to yourself and made you a deposit to yourself. Will you not think of this too? But do you also dishonor your guardianship? But if God had entrusted an orphan to you, would you thus neglect him? He has delivered yourself to your care and says, I had no one fitter to entrust him to than yourself. Keep him for me, such as he is by nature, modest, faithful, erect, unterrified, free from passion and perturbation. And then you do not keep him such. But some will say, Whence has this fellow got the arrogance which he displays and these supercilious looks? I have not yet so much gravity as befits a philosopher, for I do not yet feel confidence in what I have learned and what I have assented to. I still fear my own weakness. Let me get confidence and the you shall see a countenance such as I ought to have and an attitude such as I ought to have. Then I will show to you the statue when it is perfected, when it is polished. What do you expect? A supercilious countenance? Does the Zeus at Olympia lift up his brow? No, his look is fixed as becomes him who is ready to say, Irrevocable is my word and shall not fail. Such will I show myself to you, faithful, modest, noble, free from perturbation. What, an immortal too, exempt from old age and from sickness? No, but dying as becomes a god, sickening as becomes a god. This power I possess, this I can do, but the rest I do not possess, nor can I do. I will show the nerves of a philosopher. What nerves are these? A desire never disappointed, an aversion which never falls on that which it would avoid, a proper pursuit, a diligent purpose, an assent which is not rash. These you shall see. He who has injured thee was either stronger or weaker than thee. If weaker, spare him. If stronger, spare thyself. In the face of adversity, remember that diamonds are made under pressure. We should live our lives as though Christ were coming this afternoon. Jimmy Carter do what you can with what you have, where you are. Theodore Roosevelt I think we consider too much the good luck of the early bird and not enough the bad luck of the early worm. Franklin D. Roosevelt If you don't clear your misunderstanding in time, they become the reason for distance forever. Both optimists and pessimists contribute to society. The optimist invents the airplane, the pessimist, the parachute. You have to execute, you have to do it, Jocko Willink. Not only now henceforth to have a common breath, or to hold correspondency of breath with that air that compasseth us about, but to have a common mind, or to hold correspondency of mind also with that rational substance which compasseth all things. For that also is of itself and of its own nature, if a man can but draw it in as he should, everywhere diffused, and passeth through all things, no less than the air doth, if a man can but suck it in. Have firm boundaries and be discerning about who you let into your life. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will.
All war is a symptom of man's failure as a thinking animal. John Steinbeck Remember, health is another form of wealth. Take care of your body. If you are not falling down occasionally, you are just coasting. No one cares how you feel. They care about what you do. Jocko Willink If you do not on every occasion refer each of your actions to the ultimate end prescribed by nature, but instead of this in the act of choice or avoidance turn to some other end, your actions will not be consistent with your theories. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Learn as if you constantly feel you lack knowledge and as if you are constantly afraid of losing your knowledge. The aim of art is to represent not the outward appearance of things, but their inward significance. Aristotle. When you are working for someone else, you have the right only to labor, not to the fruits of your labor. The trouble is you think you have time. A human being is like a television set with millions of channels. We cannot let just one channel dominate us. We have the seed of everything in us, and we have to recover our own sovereignty. Teach not Hanna. Either this world is a cosmos or comely peace, because all disposed and governed by certain order, or if it be a mixture, Though confused, yet still it is a comely peace. For is it possible that in thee there should be any beauty at all, and that in the whole world there should be nothing but disorder and confusion, and all things in it too, by natural different properties, one from another, different and distinguished, and yet all through diffused, and by natural sympathy, one to another united as they are? Never confuse motion with action. A denied expectation hurts more than a denied hope, while a fulfilled hope makes us happier than a fulfilled expectation. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. Franklin D. Roosevelt We stopped looking for monsters under our bed when we realized that they were inside us. Learning to let go should be learned from learning to get it. The greatest gift that you can give to others is the gift of unconditional love and acceptance. Brian Tracy Now much time and leisure doth he gain, who is not curious to know what his neighbor hath said, or hath done, or hath attempted, but only what he doth himself, that it may be just and holy or to express it in Agathos's words, not to look about upon the evil conditions of others, but to run on straight in the line without any loose and extravagant agitation. You have to fight through some bad days to earn the best days of your life. Holding grudges will never harm the people you hate, only you. Mensana in corpore sana, a healthy mind in a healthy body, 
Juvenal. If someone is trying to bring you down, they are already below you. Raise your sail and begin. When you put faith, hope and love together, you can raise positive kids in a negative world. Zig Ziglar What solitude is and what kind of person a solitary man is? Solitude is a certain condition of a helpless man. For because a man is alone, he is not for that reason also solitary. Just as though a man is among numbers, he is not therefore not solitary. When then we have lost either a brother or a son or a friend on whom we were accustomed to repose, we say that we are left solitary, though we are often in Rome, though such a crowd meet us, though so many live in the same place and sometimes we have a great number of slaves. For the man who is solitary, as it is conceived, is considered to be a helpless person and exposed to those who wish to harm him. For this reason, when we travel, then especially do we say that we are lonely when we fall among robbers. For it is not the sight of a human creature which removes us from solitude, but the sight of one who is faithful and modest and helpful to us. For if being alone is enough to make solitude, you may say that even Zeus is solitary in the conflagration and bewails himself, saying, Unhappy that I am who have neither Hera, nor Athena, nor Apollo, nor brother, nor son, nor descendant, nor kinsman. This is what some say that he does when he is alone at the conflagration. For they do not understand how a man passes his life when he is alone because they set out from a certain natural principle, from the natural desire of community and mutual love, and from the pleasure of conversation among men. But nonetheless a man ought to be prepared in a manner for this also, to be able to be sufficient for himself and to be his own companion. For as Zeus dwells with himself and is tranquil by himself, and thinks of his own administration and of its nature, and is employed in thoughts suitable to himself, so ought we also to be able to talk with ourselves, not to feel the want of others also, not to be unprovided with the means of passing our time. To observe the divine administration and the relation of ourselves to everything else. To consider how we formerly were affected toward things that happen and how at present. What are still the things which give us pain? How these also can be cured and how removed? If any things require improvement, to improve them according to reason. For you see that Caesar appears to furnish us with great peace, that there are no longer enemies nor battles nor great associations of robbers nor of pirates, but we can travel at every hour and sail from east to west. But can Caesar give us security from fever also? Can he from shipwreck, from fire, from earthquake or from lightning? Well, I will say, can he give us security against love? He cannot. From sorrow, he cannot. From envy, he cannot. In a word, then, he cannot protect us from any of these things. But the doctrine of philosophers promises to give us security even against these things. And what does it say? Men, if you will attend to me, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, you will not feel sorrow, nor anger, nor compulsion, nor hindrance, but you will pass your time without perturbations and free from everything. When a man has this peace, not proclaimed by Caesar, for how should he be able to proclaim it? But by God through reason, is he not content when he is alone? When he sees and reflects, now no evil can happen to me. For me there is no robber, no earthquake, Everything is full of peace, full of tranquility. Every way, every city, every meeting, neighbor, companion is harmless. One person whose business it is supplies me with food, another with raiment, another with perceptions and preconceptions. And if he does not supply what is necessary, 
he gives the signal for retreat, opens the door and says to you, Go. Go whither? To nothing terrible but to the place from which you came, to your friends and kinsmen, to the elements. What there was in you of fire goes to fire, of earth to earth, of air to air, of water to water. No Hades, nor Acheron, nor Cocytus, nor Pyrophlegethon, but all is full of gods and demons. When a man has such things to think on and sees the sun, the moon, and stars, and enjoys earth and sea, he is not solitary nor even helpless. Well then, if some man should come upon me when I am alone and murder me, fool, not murder you but your poor body, what kind of solitude then remains? What want? Why do we make ourselves worse than children? And what do children do when they are left alone? They take up shells and ashes and they build something, then pull it down and build something else, and so they never want the means of passing the time. Shall I then, if you sail away, sit down and weep, because I have been left alone and solitary? Shall I then have no shells, no ashes? But children do what they do through want of thought, and we through knowledge are unhappy. Every great power is dangerous to beginners. You must then bear such things as you are able, but conformably to nature, but not. Practice sometimes a way of living like a man in health. Abstain from food, drink water. Abstain sometimes altogether from desire, in order that you may sometime desire consistently with reason. And if consistently with reason, when you have anything good in you, you will desire well. Not so, but we wish to live like wise men immediately and to be useful to men. Useful how? What are you doing? Have you been useful to yourself? But I suppose you wish to exhort them. You exhort them. You wish to be useful to them. Show to them in your own example what kind of men philosophy makes, and don't trifle. When you are eating, do good to those who eat with you. When you are drinking, to those who are drinking with you. By yielding to all, giving way, bearing with them, thus do them good, and do not spit on them your phlegm. The only sad thing would be clinging to the past once it's out of reach. Much is expected from those to whom much is given. A man grows most tired while standing still. Chinese proverb. You really don't want everybody as a friend anyway. You will be pulled down out of jealousy. Don't get surprised. It's normal. The one thing that separates winners from the losers is winners take action. Jack Canfield. If ever thou sawest either a hand or a foot or a head lying by itself in some place or other, as cut off from the rest of the body, such must thou conceive him to make himself, as much as in him lieth, that either is offended with anything that has happened, whatsoever it be, and as it were divides himself from it, or that commits anything against the natural law of mutual correspondence and society among men, or he that commits any act of uncharitableness. Whosoever thou art, thou art such, thou art cast forth, I know not whither out of the general unity, which is according to nature. Thou went born indeed apart, but now thou hast cut thyself off. However, herein is matter of joy and exultation, that thou mayst be united again. God hath not granted it unto any other part, that once separated and cut off, it might be reunited and come together again. But behold, that goodness, how great and immense it is, which hath so much esteemed man. As at first he was so made, that he needed not, 
except he would himself have divided himself from the whole. So once divided and cut off, it hath so provided and ordered it, that if he would himself he might return and grow together again, and be admitted into its former rank and place of a part, as he was before. Learn how to change a flat tire on your vehicle. The truth will come out in time. Repetitio est mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of learning. Latin proverb. Make peace with your past so it won't screw up the present. When your desires are strong enough, you will appear to possess superhuman powers to achieve. Positive thinking will let you do everything better than negative thinking will. Zig Ziglar Then hath a man attained to the estate of perfection in his life and conversation, when he so spends every day, as if it were his last day, never hot and vehement in his affections, nor yet so cold and stupid as one that had no sense, and free from all manner of dissimulation. Your self-respect has to be stronger than your feelings. You cannot wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club. Here is a rule to remember in future. When anything tempts you to feel bitter. Not, this is misfortune. But, to bear this worthily is good fortune. Marcus Aurelius Look forward, but never wait. Learn to trust your first instinct on decisions. Stop making excuses. Stop being a victim. Take personal responsibility. David Goggins The first and most necessary topic in philosophy concerns putting principles to practical use, such as, we ought not to lie. The second is concerned with demonstrations such as, why is it that we ought not to lie? And the third is concerned with confirming and articulating the first two. For example, why is this a demonstration? For what is a demonstration? What is entailment? What is contradiction? What is truth, and what is falsehood? 2. Thus the third topic of study is necessary for the second, and the second is necessary for the first. But the most necessary, the one where we ought to rest, is the first. But we do the opposite. We spend our time on the third topic. Upon this we expend all our efforts, whilst entirely neglecting the first topic. Thus. Whilst at the same time as lying, we are more than ready to explain why it is wrong to lie. Inner peace begins the moment you choose not to allow another person or event to control your emotions. It is better to make an approximately correct decision than a precise mistake. Don't allow yourself to be heard any longer griping about public life, not even with your own ears. Marcus Aurelius Time is money. Marrying is not at all difficult. It is difficult to be married.
You are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Carl Jung How clearly doth it appear unto thee that no other course of thy life could fit a true philosopher's practice better than this very course that thou art now already in. Remember some things have to end for better things to begin. Better a broken promise than none at all. Fortes Fortuna Adjuvat. Fortune favors the brave. Terence. Life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them. That only creates sorrow. Let reality be reality. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. Think of tomorrow. The past can't be mended. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Let go of the story of your life and be present to what is. Eckhart Tolle Let nothing be done rashly, and at random but all things according to the most exact and perfect rules of art. You lose them both. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Do not regret what you have done. Accept everything just the way it is. Miyamoto Musashi There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. People are capable at any time in their lives of doing what they dream of. Where love rules, there is no will to power. And where power predominates, love is lacking. The one is the shadow of the other. Carl Jung There never was such a thing as absolute justice but only agreements made in mutual dealings among men in whatever places at various times, providing against the infliction or suffering of harm. Do not depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. Get yourself together before you get any older. The older you are, the harder it is to change. You are usually about as happy as you make your mind up to be. Abraham Lincoln Being human means having doubts and yet still continuing on your path. Women make even the men more sophisticated. The now is the space where all creativity arises. Eckhart Tolle When you have made this preparation and have practiced this discipline to distinguish that which belongs to another from that which is your own, the things which are subject to hindrance from those which are not, to consider the things free from hindrance to concern yourself and those which are not free not to concern yourself, to keep your desire steadily fixed to the things which do concern yourself and turned from the things which do not concern yourself, do you still fear any man? No one. For about what will you be afraid? About the things which are your own? in which consists the nature of good and evil, 
And who has power over these things? Who can take them away? Who can impede them? No man can. No more than he can impede God. But will you be afraid about your body and your possessions? About things which are not yours? About things which in no way concern you? And what else have you been studying from the beginning than to distinguish between your own and not your own? The things which are in your power and not in your power? The things subject to hindrance and not subject? And why have you come to the philosophers? Was it that you may nevertheless be unfortunate and unhappy? You will then in this way, as I have supposed you to have done, be without fear and disturbance. And what is grief to you? For fear comes from what you expect, but grief from that which is present. But what further will you desire? For of the things which are within the power of the will, as being good and present, you have a proper and regulated desire. But of the things which are not in the power of the will, you do not desire anyone, and so you do not allow any place to that which is irrational and impatient and above measure hasty. When, then, you are thus affected toward things, what man can any longer be formidable to you? For what has a man which is formidable to another, either when you see him or speak to him or finally are conversant with him? Not more than one horse has with respect to another, or one dog to another, or one bee to another bee. Things indeed are formidable to every man, and when any man is able to confer these things on another or to take them away, then he too becomes formidable. How then is an Acropolis demolished, not by the sword, not by fire, but by opinion? For if we abolish the Acropolis which is in the city, can we abolish also that of fever and that of beautiful women? Can we, in a word, abolish the Acropolis which is in us and cast out the tyrants within us, whom we have dally over us, sometimes the same tyrants, at other times different tyrants? But with this we must begin, and with this we must demolish the Acropolis and eject the tyrants by giving up the body, the parts of it, the faculties of it, the possessions, the reputation, magisterial offices, honors, children, brothers, friends, by considering all these things as belonging to others. And if tyrants have been ejected from us, why do I still shut in the Acropolis by a wall of circumvallation? at least on my account. For if it still stands, what does it do to me? Why do I still eject guards? For where do I perceive them? Against others, they have their fasces and their spears and their swords. But I have never been hindered in my will, nor compelled when I did not will. And how is this possible? I have placed my movements toward action in obedience to God. Is it his will that I shall have fever? It is my will also. Is it his will that I should move toward anything? It is my will also. Is it his will that I should obtain anything? It is my wish also. Does he not will? I do not wish. Is it his will that I be put to the rack? It is my will then to die. It is my will then to be put to the rack. Who then is still able to hinder me contrary to my own judgment or to compel me? No more than he can hinder or compel Zeus. Thus the more cautious of travelers also act. A traveler has heard that the road is infested by robbers. He does not venture to enter on it alone, but he waits for the companionship on the road, either of an ambassador or of a quester or of a proconsul. And when he has attached himself to such persons, he goes along the road safely. So in the world the wise man acts. There are many companies of robbers, tyrants, storms, difficulties, losses of that which is dearest. Where is there any place of refuge? How shall he pass along without being attacked by robbers? What company shall he wait for that he may pass along in safety? To whom shall he attach himself? To what person generally? To the rich man? To the man of consular rank? And what is the use of that to me? 
Such a man is stripped himself, groans and laments. But what if the fellow companion himself turns against me and becomes my robber? What shall I do? I will be a friend of Caesar. When I am Caesar's companion, no man will wrong me. In the first place, that I may become illustrious, what things must I endure and suffer? How often and by how many must I he robbed? Then if I become Caesar's friend, he also is mortal. And if Caesar from any circumstance becomes my enemy, where is it best for me to retire? Into a desert? Well, does fever not come there? What shall be done then? Is it not possible to find a safe fellow traveler, a faithful one, strong, secure against all surprises? Thus he considers and perceives that if he attaches himself to God, he will make his journey in safety. How do you understand attaching yourself to God? In this sense, that whatever God wills, a man also shall will, and what God does not will, a man shall not will. How, then, shall this he done? In what other way than by examining the movements of God and his administration? What has he given to me as my own and in my own power? What has he reserved to himself? He has given to me the things which are in the power of the will. He has put them in my power, free from impediment and hindrance. How was he able to make the earthly body free from hindrance? And accordingly, he has subjected to the revolution of the whole, possessions, household things, house, children, wife. Why then do I fight against God? Why do I will what does not depend on the will? Why do I will to have absolutely what is not granted to Ma? But how ought I to will to have things, in the way in which they are given and as long as they are given? But he who has given takes away. Why then do I resist? I do not say that I shall be fool if I use force to one who is stronger, but I shall first be unjust. For whence had I things when I came into the world? My father gave them to me. And who gave them to him? And who made the sun? And who made the fruits of the earth? And who the seasons? And who made the connection of men with one another and their fellowship? Then, after receiving everything from another and even yourself, are you angry and do you blame the giver if he takes anything from you? Who are you? And for what purpose did you come into the world? Did not he introduce you here? Did he not show you the light? Did he not give you fellow workers and perception and reason? And as whom did he introduce you here? Did he not introduce you as a subject to death and as one to live on the earth with a little flesh and to observe his administration and to join with him in the spectacle and the festival for a short time? Will you not then, as long as you have been permitted, after seeing the spectacle and the solemnity, when he leads you out, go with adoration of him and thanks for what you have seen and heard? No but I would still enjoy the feast. The initiated too would wish to be longer in the initiation, and perhaps also those at Olympia to see other athletes. But the solemnity is ended. Go away like a grateful and modest man. Make room for others. Others also must be born as you were, and being born they must have a place and houses and necessary things. And if the first do not retire, what remains? Why are you insatiable? Why are you not content? Why do you contract the world? Yes, but I would have my little children with me and my wife. What, are they yours? Do they not belong to the giver and to him who made you? Then will you not give up what belongs to others? Will you not give way to him who is superior? Why then, did he introduce me into the world on these conditions? And if the conditions do not suit you, depart. He has no need of a spectator who is not satisfied. He wants those who join in the festival, those who take part in the chorus, that they may rather applaud, admire, and celebrate with hymns the solemnity. 
but those who can bear no trouble and the cowardly he will not willingly see absent from the great assembly, for they did not when they were present behave as they ought to do at a festival, nor fill up their place properly, but they lamented, found fault with the deity, fortune their companions, not seeing both what they had, and their own powers, which they received for contrary purposes, the powers of magnanimity, of a generous mind, manly spirit, and what we are now inquiring about, freedom. For what purpose then have I received these things? To use them. How long? So long as he who has lent them chooses. What if they are necessary to me? Do not attach yourself to them, and they will not be necessary. Do not say to yourself that they are necessary, and then they are not necessary. This study you ought to practice from morning to evening, beginning with the smallest things and those most liable to damage, with an earthen pot, with a cup. Then proceed in this way to a tunic, to a little dog, to a horse, to a small estate in land, then to yourself, to your body, to the parts of your body, to your brothers. Look all round and throw these things from you. No matter how smart, successful, and good-looking you are, nobody likes arrogance. Trust is easy to build but can be shattered in seconds. A man grows most tired while standing still. Chinese proverb. Live in reality as it is, not as you wish it was. Hard times may have held you down, but they will not last forever. When you really want something, and you couple that with an understanding of why it is possible, and your willingness to do whatever it takes to make it happen, you will succeed. Jack Canfield Ever consider and think upon the world as being but one living substance and having but one soul, and how all things in the world are terminated into one sensitive power and are done by one general motion, as it were, and deliberation of that one soul, and how all things that are concur in the cause of one another's being and by what manner of connection and concatenation all things happen. You will never be truly happy if you constantly seek validation from others. If something bothers you, change it. If it is beyond your control, learn to live with it. Accept it. Change yourself. That is the only thing you can influence. To be even-minded is the greatest virtue. Heraclitus Having been poor is no shame, but being ashamed of it is. The meaning of life is to give life meaning. Your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. Carl Jung In how many ways appearances exist, and what aids we should provide against them? Appearances to us in four ways, for either things appear as they are, or they are not, and do not even appear to be, or they are, and do not appear to be, or they are not, and yet appear to be. Further, in all these cases to form a right judgment is the office of an educated man. But whatever it is that annoys us, to that we ought to apply a remedy. 
If the sophisms of Pyrrho and of the academics are what annoys, we must apply the remedy to them. If it is the persuasion of appearances by which some things appear to be good when they are not good, let us seek a remedy for this. If it is habit which annoys us, we must try to seek aid against habit. What aid then can we find against habit, the contrary habit? You hear the ignorant say, That unfortunate person is dead. His father and mother are overpowered with sorrow. He was cut off by an untimely death and in a foreign land. Hear the contrary way of speaking. Tear yourself from these expressions. Oppose to one habit the contrary habit. To sophistry oppose reason and the exercise and discipline of reason. Against persuasive appearances, we ought to have manifest precognitions, cleared of all impurities and ready to hand. When death appears an evil, we ought to have this rule in readiness, that it is fit to avoid evil things, and that death is a necessary thing. For what shall I do, and where shall I escape it? Suppose that I am not Sarpedon, the son of Zeus, nor able to speak in this noble way. I will go and I am resolved either to behave bravely myself or to give to another the opportunity of doing so. If I cannot succeed in doing anything myself, I will not grudge another the doing of something noble. Suppose that it is above our power to act thus. Is it not in our power to reason thus? Tell me where I can escape death. Discover for me the country. Show me the men to whom I must go, whom death does not visit. Discover to me a charm against death. If I have not one, what do you wish me to do? I cannot escape from death. Shall I not escape from the fear of death? But shall I die lamenting and trembling? For the origin of perturbation is this, to wish for something, and that this should not happen. Therefore, if I am able to change externals according to my wish, I change them. But if I cannot, I am ready to tear out the eyes of him who hinders me. For the nature of man is not to endure to be deprived of the good, and not to endure the falling into the evil. Then at last, when I am neither able to change circumstances, nor to tear out the eyes of him who hinders me, I sit down and groan and abuse whom I can, Zeus and the rest of the gods. For if they do not care for me, what are they to me? Yes, but you will be an impious man. In what respect then will it be worse for me than it is now? To sum up, remember this, that unless piety and your interest be in the same thing, piety cannot be maintained in any man. Do not these things seem necessary? Let the followers of Pyrrho and the academics come and make their objections. For I, as to my part, have no leisure for these disputes, nor am I able to undertake the defense of common consent. If I had a suit even about a bit of land, I would call in another to defend my interests. With what evidence then am I satisfied? With that which belongs to the matter in hand. How indeed perception is affected, whether through the whole body or any part, perhaps I cannot explain, for both opinions perplex me. But that you and I are not the same, I know with perfect certainty. How do you know it? When I intend to swallow anything, I never carry it to your bee month but to my own. When I intend to take bread, I never lay hold of a broom, but I always go to the bread as to a mark. And you yourselves who take away the evidence of the senses, do you act otherwise? Who among you, when he intended to enter a bath, ever went into a mill? What then? Ought we not with all our power to hold to this also, the maintaining of general opinion and fortifying ourselves against the arguments which are directed against it? Who denies that we ought to do this? Well, he should do it who is able who has leisure for it. But as to him who trembles and is perturbed and is inwardly broken in heart, he must employ his time better on something else. You don't have to win every argument. Agree to disagree. He 
who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. The worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal, unknown. This quote most closely aligned with Aristotle. Aristotle discussed the concept of distributive justice in his work Nicomachean Ethics, where he argued that justice means giving individuals what they deserve based on their merits and circumstances, rather than treating everyone identically. Experience is the best teacher. Wealth is like seawater. The more we drink, the thirstier we become. And the same is true of fame. You cannot always control what goes on outside, but you can always control what goes on inside. Wayne Dyer on anxiety. When I see a man anxious, I say, what does this man want? If he did not want something which is not in his power, how could he be anxious? For this reason, a lute player, when he is singing by himself, has no anxiety. But when he enters the theater, he is anxious even if he has a good voice and plays well on the lute. For he not only wishes to sing well, but also to obtain applause. But this is not in his power. Accordingly, where he has skill, there he has confidence. Bring any single person who knows nothing of music, and the musician does not care for him. But in the matter where a man knows nothing and has not been practiced, there he is anxious. What matter is this? He knows not what a crowd is or what the praise of a crowd is. However, he has learned to strike the lowest chord and the highest. But what the praise of the many is? and what power it has in life he neither knows nor has he thought about it. Hence, he must of necessity tremble and grow pale. I cannot then say that a man is not a lute player when I see him afraid, but I can say something else, and not one thing, but many. And first of all I call him a stranger, and say, This man does not know in what part of the world he is, but though he has been here so long, he is ignorant of the laws of the state and the customs, and what is permitted and what is not, and he has never employed any lawyer to tell him and to explain the laws. But a man does not write a will, if he does not, does not know how it ought to be written, or he employs a person who does know, nor does he rashly seal a bond or write a security, but he uses his desire without a lawyer's advice and aversion and pursuit and attempt and purpose. How do you mean without a lawyer? He does not know that he wills what is not allowed, and does not will that which is of necessity. And he does not know either what is his own or what is or what is another man's. But if he did know, he could never be impeded. He would never be hindered. He would not be anxious. How so? Is any man then afraid about things which are not evil? No. Is he afraid about things which are evils, but still so far within his power that they may not happen? Certainly he is not. If then the things which are independent of the will are neither good nor bad, and all things which do depend on the will are within our power, and no man can either take them from us or give them to us, if we do not choose, where is room left for anxiety? But we are anxious about our poor body, our little property, about the will of Caesar, but not anxious about things internal. Are we anxious about not forming a false opinion? No, for this is in my power, about not exerting our movements contrary to nature. No, not even about this. When then you see a man pale, as the physician says, judging from the complexion, this man's spleen is disordered, that man's liver. So also say, this man's desire and aversion are disordered, he is not in the right way, he is in a fever. 
for nothing else changes the color or causes trembling or chattering of the teeth or causes a man to sink in his knees and shift from foot to foot. For this reason, when Zeno was going to meet Antigonus, he was not anxious, for Antigonus had no power over any of the things which Zeno admired. And Zeno did not care for those things over which Antigonus had power. But Antigonus was anxious when he was going to meet Zeno, for he wished to please Zeno, but this was a thing external. But Zeno did not want to please Antigonus, for no man who is skilled in any art wishes to please one who has no such skill. Should I try to please you? Why? I suppose you know the measure by which one man is estimated by another. Have you taken pains to learn what is a good man and what is a bad man, and how a man becomes one or the other? Why then are you not good yourself? How, he replies, am I not good? Because no good man laments or roans or weeps. No good man is pale and trembles or says, How will he receive me? How will he listen to me? Slave just as it pleases him. Why do you care about what belongs to others? Is it now his fault if he receives badly what proceeds from you? Certainly. And is it possible that a fault should be one man's and the evil in another? No. Why then are you anxious about that which belongs to others? Your question is reasonable, but I am anxious how I shall speak to him. Cannot you then speak to him as you choose? But I fear that I may be disconcerted. If you are going to write the name of Dion, are you afraid that you would be disconcerted? By no means. Why? Is it not because you have practiced writing the name? Certainly. Well, if you were going to read the name, would you not feel the same? And why? because every art has a certain strength and confidence in the things which belong to it. Have you then not practiced speaking? And what else did you learn in the school? Syllogisms and sophistical propositions? For what purpose? Was it not for the purpose of discoursing skillfully? And is not discoursing skillfully the same as discoursing seasonably and cautiously and with intelligence? and also without making mistakes and without hindrance, and besides all this with confidence? Yes. When then you are mounted on a horse and go into a plane, are you anxious at being matched against a man who is on foot, and anxious in a matter in which you are practiced, and he is not? Yes, but that person has power to kill me. Speak the truth then, unhappy man, and do not brag nor claim to be a philosopher, nor refuse to acknowledge your masters. But so long as you present this handle in your body, follow every man who is stronger than yourself. Socrates used to practice speaking. He who talked as he did to the tyrants, to the diecasts. He who talked in his prison. Diogenes had practiced speaking. He who spoke as he did to Alexander, to the pirates, to the person who bought him. These men were confident in the things which they practiced. But do you walk off to your own affairs and never leave them? Go and sit in a corner and weave syllogisms and propose them to another? There is not in you the man who can rule a state. What the ancients called a clever fighter is one who not only wins but excels in winning with ease. Do yourself a favor, get rich. Life gets easier with money, not time. What we do now echoes in eternity. Marcus Aurelius The more thankful you are, the more you attract things to be thankful for. Art is the mediator of what cannot be said. Fear is the biggest disability of all. It will paralyze you more than being in a wheelchair. Nick Vujicic An 
on providence. When you make any charge against providence, consider and you will learn that the thing has happened according to reason. Yes, but the unjust man has the advantage. In what? In money. Yes, for he is superior to you in this, that he flatters, is free from shame, and is watchful. What is the wonder? But see if he has the advantage over you in being faithful, in being modest, for you will not find it to be so. But wherein you are superior, there you will find that you have the advantage. And I once said to a man who was vexed because Philostorgus was fortunate, Would you choose to lie with Sura? May it never happen, he replied, that this day should come. Why then are you vexed if he receives something in return for that which he sells? Or how can you consider him happy who acquires those things by such means as you abominate? Or what wrong does providence if he gives the better things to the better men? Is it not better to be modest than to be rich? He admitted this. Why are you vexed then, man, when you possess the better thing? Remember then always and have in readiness the truth that this is a law of nature, that the superior has an advantage over the inferior in that in which he is superior, and you will never be vexed. But my wife treats me badly. Well, if any man asks you what this is, say, my wife treats me badly. Is there then nothing more? Nothing. My father gives me nothing. But to say that this is an evil is something which must be added to it externally and falsely added. For this reason we must not get rid of poverty but of the opinion about poverty and then we shall be happy. New beginnings are disguised as painful endings. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. Those who are free of resentful thoughts surely find peace. Buddha. Making mistakes is better than faking perfection. Man's manners are a mirror in which his portrait is reflected. Success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. Jim Rohn Mastery Self-mastery is a vital component of freedom. If you do not have mastery over yourself, you will never be truly free from conflict, dilemma, or self-doubt. Freedom and self-mastery allow you to be self-determining, which in turn empowers you to be the master of your own life, your own journey, and your own destiny. The skill of mastery gives you the ability to control your emotions, your perspectives, and your reactions, while self-mastery makes it capable for you to determine your own actions and not allow external actions to control you. Learning how to be a master of your emotions frees you from negative mood dysregulation while increasing your ability to better manage your reactions and coping strategies. Self-mastery is seen as the final goal in living a stoic life. To have mastery over yourself is to truly know and accept the things you can and cannot control. People don't resist change, they resist being changed. True greatness begins with understanding your own insignificance. The best way to overcome the suffering of life is to stop clinging to the things of life. Buddha
Have patience. All things are difficult before they become easy. Sometimes a hypocrite is nothing more than a man in the process of changing. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Carl Jung Consider how many different things, whether they concern our bodies or our souls, in a moment of time come to pass in every one of us, and so thou wilt not wonder if many more things, or rather all things that are done, can at one time subsist and coexist in that both one and general, which we call the world. Always be able to support yourself financially, mentally, and physically. Patience is your ally. Faber est suae kiske fortunae. Every man is the artisan of his own fortune. Appius Claudius Cicus. Learn to be sufficient and realize you are immortal. Inwardly, everything should be different, but our outward face should conform with the crowd. Awakening is not changing who you are, but discarding who you are not. Deepak Chopra against those who hastily rush into the use of the philosophic dress. Never praise nor blame a man because of the things which are common, and do not ascribe to him any skill or want of skill, and thus you will be free from rashness and from malevolence. This man bathes very quickly. Does he then do wrong? Certainly not. But what does he do? He bathes very quickly. Are all things then done well? By no means, but the acts which proceed from right opinions are done well, and those which proceed from bad opinions are done ill. But do you, until you know the opinion from which a man does each thing, neither praise nor blame the act, but the opinion is not easily discovered from the external things? This man is a carpenter. Why? Because he uses an axe. What then is this to the matter? This man is a musician because he sings. And what does that signify? This man is a philosopher because he wears a cloak and long hair. And what does a juggler wear? For this reason, if a man sees any philosopher acting indecently, immediately he says, see what the philosopher is doing. But he ought because of the man's indecent behavior rather to say that he is not a philosopher. For if this is the preconceived notion of a philosopher, and what he professes to wear a cloak and long hair, men would say well. But if what he professes is this rather, to keep himself free from faults, why do we not rather, because he does not make good his professions, take from him the name of philosopher? For so we do in the case of all other arts. When a man sees another handling an axe badly, he does not say, What is the use of the carpenter's art? See how badly carpenters do their work. But he says just the contrary. This man is not a carpenter, for he uses an axe badly. In the same way, if a man hears another singing badly, he does not say, See how musicians sing, but rather, This man is not a musician. But it is in the matter of philosophy only that people do this. When they see a man acting contrary to the profession of a philosopher, they do not take away his title, but they assume him to be a philosopher. And from his acts, deriving the fact that he is behaving indecently, they conclude that there is no use in philosophy. What then is the reason of this? Because we attach value to the notion of a carpenter, 
and to that of a musician, and to the notion of other artisans in like manner, but not to that of a philosopher, and we judge from externals only that it is a thing confused and ill-defined. And what other kind of art has a name from the dress and the hair, and has not theorems and a material and an end? What then is the material of the philosopher? Is it a cloak? No. But reason, what is his end? Is it to wear a cloak? No. But to possess the reason in a right state? Of what kind are his theorems? Are they those about the way in which the beard becomes great, or the hair long? No, but rather what Zeno says, to know the elements of reason, what kind of a thing each of them is, and how they are fitted to one another, and what things are consequent upon them. Will you not then see first if he does what he professes when he acts in an unbecoming manner, and then blame his study? But now, when you yourself are acting in a sober way, you say in consequence of what he seems to you to be doing wrong, look at the philosopher, as if it were proper to call by the name of philosopher one who does these things. And further, this is the conduct of a philosopher. But you do not say, look at the carpenter, when you know that a carpenter is an adulterer, or you see him to be a glutton. Nor do you say, see the musician. Thus, to a certain degree, even you perceive the profession of a philosopher, but you fall away from the notion, and you are confused through want of care. But even the philosophers themselves, as they are called, pursue the thing by beginning with things which are common to them and others. As soon as they have assumed a cloak and grown a beard, they say, I am a philosopher. But no man will say, I am a musician, if he has bought a plectrum and a lute, nor will he say, I am a smith, if he has put on a cap and apron. But the dress is fitted to the art, and they take their name from the art and not from the dress. For this reason Euphrates used to say, Well, a long time I strove to be a philosopher without people knowing it, and this, he said, was useful to me. For first I knew that when I did anything well, I did not do it for the sake of the spectators, but for the sake of myself. I ate well for the sake of myself. I had my countenance well composed and my walk, all for myself and for God. Recognizing that you are not where you want to be is a starting point to begin changing your life. Try. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. We must take a higher view of all things and bear with them more easily. It better becomes a man to scoff at life than to lament over it. Seneca If you cannot have a faithful friend, be your own friend. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. He who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. The meeting of preparation with opportunity generates the offspring we call luck. Tony Robbins For it is a thing very possible that a man should be a very divine man, and yet be altogether unknown. This thou must ever be mindful of, as of this also, that a man's true happiness doth consist in very few things, and that although thou dost despair, that thou shalt ever be a good, either logician or naturalist, yet thou art never the further off by it from being either liberal or modest or charitable or obedient unto God. We live longer when we are too busy living. Our friends show us what we can do. Our enemies teach us what we must do.
Silence is a true friend who never betrays. Confucius. What we know is a drop. What we don't know is an ocean. A friend to all is a friend to none. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Les Brown. Him that offends, to teach with love and meekness, and to show him his error. But if thou canst not, then to blame thyself, or rather not thyself neither, if thy will and endeavors have not been wanting. Weak desire brings weak results, just as a small fire makes a small amount of heat. Your past was never a mistake if you learned from it. Remember that you are a citizen of the world. Marcus Aurelius this quote emphasizes the Stoic concept of cosmopolitanism and the importance of recognizing our interconnectedness with all living beings. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. If you want a happy life, Tie it to a goal, not to people or things. In life, you have a choice. Bitter or better, choose better, forget bitter. Nick Vujicic And as for thy body, what canst thou fear, if thou dost consider that thy mind and understanding when once it hath recollected itself, and knows its own power, hath in this life and breath, whether it run smoothly and gently, or whether harshly and rudely, no interest at all, but is altogether indifferent, and whatsoever else thou hast heard and assented unto concerning either pain or pleasure, but the care of thine honor and reputation will perchance distract thee. How can that be, if thou dost look back, and consider both how quickly all things that are are forgotten, and what an immense chaos of eternity was before and will follow after all things, and the vanity of praise, and the inconstancy and variableness of human judgments and opinions, and the narrowness of the place, wherein it is limited and circumscribed. For the whole earth is but as one point, and of it, this inhabited part of it, is but a very little part, and of this part, how many in number, and what manner of men are they, that will commend thee? What remains then, but that thou often put in practice this kind of retiring of thyself, to this little part of thyself, and above all things, keep thyself from distraction, and intend not anything vehemently, but be free and consider all things, as a man whose proper object is virtue, as a man whose true nature is to be kind and sociable, as a citizen, as a mortal creature, among other things, which to consider and look into thou must use to withdraw thyself, let those two be among the most obvious and at hand. One, that the things or objects themselves reach not unto the soul but stand without still and quiet, and that it is from the opinion only which is within, that all the tumult and all the trouble doth proceed. The next, that all these things, which now thou seest, shall within a very little while be changed and be no more, and ever call to mind how many changes and alterations in the world thou thyself hast already been an eyewitness of in thy time. This world is mere change, and this life, opinion. To recognize your insignificance is empowering.
Love your enemies, for they tell you your faults. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Buddha Mostly people will treat you according to their needs and greed. If you hate starting over, stop quitting. To earn more, you must learn more. Brian Tracy As long as the foot doth that which belongeth unto it to do, and the hand that which belongs unto it, their labor, whatsoever it be, is not unnatural. So a man, as long as he doth that which is proper unto a man, his labor cannot be against nature, and if it be not against nature, then neither is it hurtful unto him. But if it were so that happiness did consist in pleasure, how came notorious robbers, impure, abominable livers, parasites, and tyrants in so large a measure to have their part of pleasures? Things won't happen in a certain way just because you want them to happen that way. Do not say a little in many words, but a great deal in a few. Let go of attachments and desires, and you will find peace. Buddha Arouse the other person to an eager want. He who can do this has the whole world with him. Only time can heal what reason cannot. The truth cannot be taught, it can only be realized. Muji Stir up thy mind and recall thy wits again from thy natural dreams and visions and when thou art perfectly awoken and canst perceive that they were but dreams that troubled thee as one newly awakened out of another kind of sleep. Look upon these worldly things with the same mind as thou didst upon those that thou sawest in thy sleep. Ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? Avoid disappointment, expect nothing from nobody. I cannot teach anybody anything, I can only make them think. Socrates Learn first, teach later Of all the thieves, idiots are the most harmful They steal our time and mood from us If you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you want and copy what they do. Alex Hormozzi Let death and exile and all other things that seem terrible appear daily before your eyes, but especially death, ah, and you will never entertain any abject thought nor long for anything excessively. Men are moved by two levers only, fear and self-interest. I would rather be a swineherd understood by the swine than a poet misunderstood by men. Pleasures can become punishments when taken beyond a certain point. Marcus Aurelius Rather go to bed without dinner than to rise in debt. No one cares except you. Do what lifts you up in your eyes, 
What people say does not matter. Be like a tree and let the dead leaves drop, Rumi. How we should behave to tyrants. If a man possesses any superiority, or thinks that he does when he does not, such a man, if he is uninstructed, will of necessity be puffed up through it. For instance, the tyrant says, I am master of all. And what can you do for me? Can you give me desire which shall have no hindrance? How can you? Have you the infallible power of avoiding what you would avoid? Have you the power of moving toward an object without error? And how do you possess this power? Come when you are in a ship, do you trust to yourself or to the helmsman? And when you are in a chariot, to whom do you trust but to the driver? And how is it in all other arts? Just the same. In what then lies your power? All men pay respect to me. Well, I also pay respect to my platter, and I wash it and wipe it. And for the sake of my oil flask, I drive a peg into the wall. Well then, are these things superior to me? No, but they supply some of my wants, and for this reason I take care of them. Well, do I not attend to my ass? Do I not wash his feet? Do I not clean him? Do you not know that every man has regard to himself, and to you just the same as he has regard to his ass? For who has regard to you as a man? Show me, who wishes to become like you? Who imitates you as he imitates Socrates? But I can cut off your head. You say right. I had forgotten that I must have regard to you, as I would to a fever in the bile, and raise an altar to you, as there is at Rome an altar to fever. What is it then that disturbs and terrifies the multitude? Is it the tyrant and his guards? I hope that it is not so. It is not possible that what is by nature free can be disturbed by anything else, or hindered by any other thing than by itself. But it is a man's own opinions which disturb him. For when the tyrant says to a man, I will chain your leg, he who values his leg says, Do not, have pity. But he who values his own will says, If it appears more advantageous to you, Chain it. Do you not care? I do not care. I will show you that I am master. You cannot do that. Zeus has set me free. Do you think that he intended to allow his own son to be enslaved? But you are master of my carcass. Take it. So when you approach me, you have no regard to me? No, but I have regard to myself. And if you wish me to say that I have regard to you also... I tell you that I have the same regard to you that I have to my pipkin. This is not a perverse self-regard, for the animal is constituted so as to do all things for itself. For even the sun does all things for itself, nay, even Zeus himself. But when he chooses to be the giver of rain and the giver of fruits and the father of gods and men, you see that he cannot obtain these functions and these names if he is not useful to man and universally he has made the nature of the rational animal such that it cannot obtain any one of its own proper interests if it does not contribute something to the common interest. In this manner and sense it is not unsociable for a man to do everything for the sake of himself. For what do you expect? That a man should neglect himself and his own interest? And how in that case can there be one and the same principle in all animals? the principle of attachment to themselves. What then? When absurd notions about things independent of our will, as if they were good and bad, lie at the bottom of our opinions, we must of necessity pay regard to tyrants. For I wish that men would pay regard to tyrants only, and not also to the bedchamber men. How is it that the man becomes all at once wise, when Caesar has made him superintendent of the close stool? How is it that we say immediately, Felicion spoke sensibly to me. I wish he were ejected from the bedchamber, that he might again appear to you to be a fool. 
Epaphroditus had a shoemaker whom he sold because he was good for nothing. This fellow by some good luck was bought by one of Caesar's men and became Caesar's shoemaker. You should have seen what respect Epaphroditus paid to him. How does the good Felician do, I pray? Then if any of us ask, what is Master doing? The answer, he is consulting about something with Felician. Had he not sold the man as good for nothing, who then made him wise all at once? This is an instance of valuing something else than the things which depend on the will. Has a man been exalted to the tribuneship? All who meet him offer their congratulations. One kisses his eyes, another the neck, and the slaves kiss his hands. He goes to his house, he finds torches lighted. He ascends the capital. He offers a sacrifice of the occasion. Now, whoever sacrificed for having had good desires, for having acted conformably to nature, for in fact we thank the gods for those things in which we place our good, a person was talking to me today about the priesthood of Augustus. I say to him, Man, let the thing alone. You will spend much for no purpose. But he replies, Those who draw up agreements will write any name. Do you then stand by those who read them and say to such persons, It is I whose name is written there. And if you can now be present on all such occasions, what will you do when you are dead? My name will remain. Write it on a stone, and it will remain. But come, what remembrance of you will there be beyond Nicopolis? But I shall wear a crown of gold. If you desire a crown at all, take a crown of roses and put it on, for it will be more elegant in appearance. If you expect others to make you happy, you will always be disappointed. You are responsible for your own happiness. Nobody's intentions are truly clear even after being stated. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. Marcus Aurelius To be the best, you must be able to handle the worst. Never regret a day in your life. Good days give happiness. Bad days give experience. Worst days give lessons. And best days give memories. Winners make a habit of manufacturing their own positive expectations in advance of the event. Brian Tracy Where there shall neither roarer be nor harlot. Why so? As thou dost purpose to live, when thou hast retired thyself to some such place, where neither roarer nor harlot is, so mayest thou hear. And if they will not suffer thee, then mayest thou leave thy life rather than thy calling, but so as one that doth not think himself anyways wronged, only as one would say, Here is a smoke, I will out of it, and what a great matter is this. Now till some such thing force me out, I will continue free, neither shall any man hinder me to do what I will and my will shall ever be by the proper nature of a reasonable and sociable creature, regulated and directed. You give power to someone you blame for your problems. Live your life so that when you die the world cries and you rejoice. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. Steve Jobs When you talk, you only repeat what you already know.
If you listen, you may learn something. If a man knows more than others, he becomes lonely. The only way that you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have to suffer to grow. David Goggins It is not circumstances themselves that trouble people, but their judgments about those circumstances. For example, death is nothing terrible, for if it were, it would have appeared so to Socrates. But having the opinion that death is terrible, this is what is terrible. Therefore, whenever we are hindered or troubled or distressed, let us never blame others, but ourselves, that is, our own opinions. The uneducated person blames others for their failures. Those who have just begun to be instructed blame themselves. Those whose learning is complete blame neither others nor themselves. Stay strong even when things begin to fall apart. Stay strong. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. There could be no justice unless there were also injustice. No courage unless there were cowardice. No truth unless there were falsehood. Chrysippus. Live like there's no tomorrow and do what you love. The money will flow. A salary is the drug they give you to forget your dreams. To see the truth, you must be willing to let go of your concepts and beliefs. Muji. To suffer change can be no hurt, as no benefit it is, by change to attain to being. The age and time of the world is as it were a flood and swift current, consisting of the things that are brought to pass in the world. For as soon as anything hath appeared, and is passed away, another succeeds, and that also will presently out of sight. Things hardest to bear are sweetest to remember. Time always exposes what you truly mean to someone. Even the finest sword plunged into salt water will eventually rust. Have I done something for the common good? Then I share in the benefits. Marcus Aurelius Expect nothing, appreciate everything. If you don't let go of the wrong people, you'll never meet the right people. The only reality is the one you imagine and feel as true. Neville Goddard What are their minds and understandings? And what the things that they apply themselves unto? What do they love? And what do they hate for? Fancy to thyself the estate of their souls openly to be seen. When they think they hurt them shrewdly, whom they speak ill of, and when they think they do them a very good turn, whom they commend and extol, oh, how full are they then of conceit and opinion. A house is not a home unless it contains food and fire for the mind as well as the body. Be the best you, but you must be able to handle the worst. Let each thing you would do, say or intend be, like that of a dying person. Marcus Aurelius
Accept criticism, but never accept disrespect. What is not started today is never finished tomorrow. All of the great geniuses of the world were inspired and driven by their desire to enrich the lives of others. Brian Tracy What portion soever, either of air or fire, there be in thee, although by nature it tend upwards, submitting nevertheless to the ordinance of the universe, it abides here below in this mixed body. So whatsoever is in thee, either earthy or humid, although by nature it tend downwards, yet is it against its nature both raised upwards and standing or consistent. So obedient are even the elements themselves to the universe, abiding patiently wheresoever, though against their nature, they are placed until the sound, as it were, of their retreat and separation. Is it not a grievous thing, then, that thy reasonable part only should be disobedient and should not endure to keep its place? Yea, though it be nothing enjoined that is contrary unto it, but that only which is according to its nature, for we cannot say of it when it is disobedient, as we say of the fire or air, that it tends upwards towards its proper element, for then goes it the quite contrary way. For the motion of the mind to any injustice or incontinency or to sorrow or to fear is nothing else but a separation from nature. Also when the mind is grieved for anything that has happened by the divine providence, then doth it likewise forsake its own place. For it was ordained unto holiness and godliness, which specially consist in an humble submission to God and his providence in all things, as well as unto justice. These also being part of those duties, which as naturally sociable we are bound unto, and without which we cannot happily converse one with another, yea, in the very ground and fountain indeed of all just actions. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you wish, but you only spend it once. People are frugal in guarding their personal property, but as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. Seneca Tell me, and I will forget. Show me, and I may remember. Involve me, and I will understand. Everyone has three faces. Firstly, the one we show to the world and strangers. Secondly, the one we show to family, spouses, and close friends. And thirdly, the one we show only to ourselves. My actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground on which I stand. Thich Nhat Hanh. what things we ought to despise and what things we ought to value. The difficulties of all men are about external things. Their helplessness is about externals. What shall I do? How will it be? How will it turn out? Will this happen? Will that? All these are the words of those who are turning themselves to things which are not within the power of the will. For who says, How shall I not assent to that which is false? How shall I not turn away from the truth? If a man be of such a good disposition as to be anxious about these things, I will remind him of this. Why are you anxious? The thing is in your own power. Be assured. Do not be precipitate in assenting before you apply the natural rule. On the other side, if a man is anxious about desire, 
lest it fail in its purpose and miss its end, and with respect to the avoidance of things, lest he should fall into that which he would avoid, I will first kiss him, because he throws away the things about which others are in a flutter and their fears, and employs his thoughts about his own affairs and his own condition. Then I shall say to him, If you do not choose to desire that which you will fall to obtain, nor to attempt to avoid that into which you will fall, desire nothing which belongs to others, nor try to avoid any of the things which are not in your power. If you do not observe this rule, you must of necessity fall in your desires and fall into that which you would avoid. What is the difficulty here? Where is there room for the words, how will it be, and how will it turn out, and will this happen or that? Now is not that which will happen independent of the will? Yes, and the nature of good and of evil, is it not in the things which are within the power of the will? Yes. Is it in your power, then, to treat according to nature everything which happens? Can any person hinder you? No, man. No longer then say to me, How will it be? For however it may be, you will dispose of it well, and the result to you will be a fortunate one. What would Hercules have been if he had said, How shall a great lion not appear to me, or a great boar, or savage men? And what do you care for that? If a great boar appear, you will fight a greater fight. If bad men appear, you relieve the earth of the bad. Suppose, then, that I may lose my life in this way. You will die a good man, doing a noble act. For since we must certainly die, of necessity a man must be found doing something either following the employment of a husbandman, or digging, or trading, or serving in a consulship, or suffering from indigestion, or from diarrhea. What then do you wish to be doing when you are found by death? I, for my part, would wish to be found doing something which belongs to a man, beneficent, suitable to the general interest, noble. But if I cannot be found doing things so great, I would be found doing at least that which I cannot be hindered from doing, that which is permitted me to do, correcting myself, cultivating the faculty which makes use of appearances, laboring at freedom from the affects, rendering to the relations of life their due. If I succeed so far, also touching on the third topic, safety in the forming judgments about things, if death surprises me when I am busy about these things, it is enough for me if I can stretch out my hands to God and say, The means which I have received from Thee for seeing Thy administration and following it, I have not neglected. I have not dishonored Thee by my acts. See how I have used my perceptions. See how I have used my preconceptions. Have I ever blamed Thee? Have I been discontented with anything that happens or wished it to be otherwise? Have I wished to transgress the relations? That Thou hast given me life, I thank Thee for what Thou hast given me. So long as I have used the things which are Thine, I am content. Take them back and place them wherever Thou mayest choose. For Thine were all things Thou gavest them to me. Is it not enough to depart in this state of mind? And what life is better and more becoming than that of a man who is in this state of mind? And what end is more happy? But that this may be done, a man must receive no small things, nor are the things small which he must lose. You cannot both wish to be a consul and to have these things, and to be eager to have lands and these things also and to be solicitous about slaves and about yourself. But if you wish for anything which belongs to another, that which is your own is lost. This is the nature of the thing. Nothing is given or had for nothing. And where is the wonder? If you wish to be a consul, you must keep awake, run about, kiss hands, waste yourself with exhaustion at other men's doors, 
say and do many things unworthy of a free man, send gifts to many, daily presents to some, and what is the thing that is got? Twelve bundles of rods, to sit three or four times on the tribunal, to exhibit the games in the circus, and to give suppers in small baskets. Or, if you do not agree about this, let someone show me what there is besides these things. In order, then, to secure freedom from passions, tranquility, to sleep well when you do sleep, to be really awake when you are awake, to fear nothing, to be anxious about nothing, will you spend nothing and give no labor? But if anything belonging to you be lost while you are thus busied, or be wasted badly, or another obtains what you ought to have obtained, will you immediately be vexed at what has happened? Will you not take into the account on the other side what you receive and for what? How much for how much? Do you expect to have for nothing things so great? And how can you? One work has no community with another. You cannot have both external things after bestowing care on them and your own ruling faculty. But if you would have those, give up this. If you do not, you will have neither this nor that, while you are drawn in different ways to both. The oil will be spilled, the household vessels will perish, but I shall be free from passions. There will be a fire when I am not present, and the books will be destroyed, but I shall treat appearances according to nature. Well, but I shall have nothing to eat. If I am so unlucky, death is a harbor, and death is the harbor for all. This is the place of refuge, and for this reason not one of the things in life is difficult. As soon as you choose, you are out of the house and are smoked no more. Why then are you anxious? Why do you lose your sleep? Why do you not straightway, after considering wherein your good is, and your evil say, both of them are in my power. Neither can any man deprive me of the good, nor involve me in the bad against my will. Why do I not throw myself down and snore? For all that I have is safe. As to the things which belong to others, he will look to them who gets them, as they may be given by him who has the power. Who am I who wish to have them in this way or in that? Is a power of selecting them given to me? Has any person made me the dispenser of them? Those things are enough for me over which I have power. I ought to manage them as well as I can. And all the rest, as the master of them may choose. When a man has these things before his eyes, does he keep awake and turn hither and thither? What would he have, or what does he regret, Patroclus or Antilochus or Menelaus? For when did he suppose that any of his friends was immortal? And when had he not before his eyes that on the morrow or the day after he or his friend must die? Yes, he says, but I thought that he would survive me and bring up my son. You were a fool for that reason, and you were thinking of what was uncertain. Why, then, do you not blame yourself and sit crying like girls? But he used to set my food before me. Because he was alive, you fool, but now he cannot. But Automedon will set it before you, and if Automedon also dies, you will find another. But if the pot in which your meat was cooked should be broken, must you die of hunger, because you have not the pot which you are accustomed to? Do you not send and buy a new pot? He says, No greater ill could fall on me. Why is this your ill? Do you then, instead of removing it, blame your mother for not foretelling it to you that you might continue grieving from that time? What do you think? Do you not suppose that Homer wrote this that we may learn that those of noblest birth, the strongest and the richest, the most handsome, when they have not the opinions which they ought to have, are not prevented from being most wretched and unfortunate. Enjoy every bit of your life to the fullest.
You are the only person you can control. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. May West. If you don't value your time, neither will others. The person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations and the demands to perform are high. Jim Rohn Fancy not to thyself things future, as though they were present, but of those that are present. Take some aside, that thou takest most benefit of, and consider of them particularly, how wonderfully thou wouldst want them, if they were not present. But take heed withal, lest that whilst thou dost settle thy contentment in things present, thou grow in time so to overprize them, as that the want of them, whensoever it shall so fall out, should be a trouble and a vexation unto thee. Wind up thyself into thyself. Such is the nature of thy reasonable commanding part, as that if it exercise justice, and have by that means tranquility within itself, it doth rest fully satisfied with itself without any other thing. Life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you wish, but you only spend it once. Our greatest battles are that with our own minds. Man conquers the world by conquering himself. Zeno of Cetium. What hurts us is what heals us. Do not correct people if you could just as easily let it slide. Root out the violence in your life and learn to live compassionately and mindfully. Seek peace. When you have peace within, real peace with others is possible. Thishnat Han Sift their minds and understandings, and behold what men they be, whom thou dost stand in fear of what they shall judge of thee, what they themselves judge of themselves. Maybe the path that scares you the most is the one you need to take. When you laugh, people laugh with you. And when you cry, you cry alone. Efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. John F. Kennedy When you stop chasing the wrong things, the right ones catch up. People will enjoy the show. Don't be weak in front of them. The sense of I is the most basic experience and the root of all experiences. Nisargadatta Maharaj And remember that philosophy requireth nothing of thee but what thy nature requireth, and wouldest thou thyself desire anything that is not according to nature? For which of these sayest thou, that which is according to nature or against it, is of itself more kind and pleasing? Is it not for that respect especially that pleasure itself is to so many men's hurt and overthrow, most prevalent because esteemed commonly most kind and natural? But consider well whether magnanimity rather, and true liberty, and true simplicity, and equanimity, and holiness, whether these be not most kind and natural, and prudency itself, what more kind and amiable than it, when thou shalt truly consider with thyself 
what it is through all the proper objects of thy rational intellectual faculty currently to go on without any fall or stumble. As for the things of the world, their true nature is in a manner so involved with obscurity that unto many philosophers, and those no mean ones, they seemed altogether incomprehensible, and the Stoics themselves, though they judged them not altogether incomprehensible, yet scarce and not without much difficulty comprehensible, so that all assent of ours is fallible, for who is he that is infallible in his conclusions? From the nature of things, pass now unto their subjects and matter. How temporary, how vile are they, I such as may be in the power and possession of some abominable loose liver, of some common strumpet, of some notorious oppressor and extortioner. Pass from thence to the dispositions of them that thou doest ordinarily converse with, how hardly do we bear even with the most loving and amiable, that I may not say, how hard it is for us to bear even with our own selves, in such obscurity and impurity of things, in such and so continual a flux both of the substances and time, both of the motions themselves, and things moved, what it is that we can fasten upon, either to honor and respect especially, or seriously and studiously to seek after, I cannot so much as conceive, for indeed they are things contrary. It is the first responsibility of every citizen to question authority. Forget what hurts you, but never forget what it taught you. The root of suffering is attachment, Buddha. Give back, even if it's donating your tag sale leftovers or handing a dollar bill over to someone less fortunate. Do it. It'll make you feel good. There's nothing you can't achieve if you aren't afraid of dying. You can't win if you don't play, Alex Hormozzi. Against the Epicureans and Academics The propositions which are true and evident are of necessity used even by those who contradict them. And a man might perhaps consider it to be the greatest proof of a thing being evident that it is found to be necessary even for him who denies it to make use of it at the same time. For instance, if a man should deny that there is anything universally true, it is plain that he must make the contradictory negation that nothing is universally true. What wretch do you not admit even this? For what else is this than to affirm that whatever is universally affirmed is false? Again, if a man should come forward and say, Know that there is nothing that can be known, but all things are incapable of sure evidence. Or if another say, Believe me, and you will be the better for it, that a man ought not to believe anything. Or again, if another should say, Learn from me, man, that it is not possible to learn anything. I tell you this and will teach you if you choose. Now in what respect do these differ from those? Whom shall I name? Those who call themselves academics, men, agree that no man agrees. Believe us that no man believes anybody. Thus Epicurus also, when he designs to destroy the natural fellowship of mankind, at the same time makes use of that which he destroys. For what does he say? Be not deceived, men, nor be led astray, nor be mistaken. There is no natural fellowship among rational animals. Believe me. But those who say otherwise deceive you and seduce you by false reasons. What is this to you? Permit us to be deceived. Will you fare worse if all the rest of us are persuaded that there is a natural fellowship among us and that it ought by all means to be preserved? Nay, it will be much better and safer for you. Man, why do you trouble yourself about us? 
Why do you keep awake for us? Why do you light your lamp? Why do you rise early? Why do you write so many books that no one of us may be deceived about the gods and believe that they take care of men, or that no one may suppose the nature of good to be other than pleasure? For if this is so, lie down and sleep and lead the life of a worm of which you judged yourself worthy. Eat and drink and enjoy women and ease yourself and snore. And what is it to you how the rest shall think about these things, whether right or wrong? For what have we to do with you? You take care of sheep because they supply us with wool and milk and last of all, with their flesh. Would it not be a desirable thing if men could be lulled and enchanted by the Stoics and sleep and present themselves to you and to those like you to be shorn and milked? For this you ought to say to your brother Epicureans, but ought you not to conceal it from others and particularly before everything to persuade them that we are by nature adapted for fellowship, that temperance is a good thing, in order that all things may be secured for you? Or ought we to maintain this fellowship with some and not with others? With whom then ought we to maintain it? With such as on their part also maintain it? Or with such as violate this fellowship? And who violate it more than you who establish such doctrines? What then was it that waked Epicurus from his sleepiness and compelled him to write what he did write? What else was it than that which is the strongest thing in men, nature, which draws a man to her own will, though he be unwilling and complaining. For since, she says, you think that there is no community among mankind, write this opinion and leave it for others, and break your sleep to do this, and by your own practice condemn your own opinions. Shall we then say that Orestes was agitated by the Erinyes and roused from his deep sleep, and did not more savage Erinyes and pains rouse Epicurus from his sleep and not allow him to rest, but compelled him to make known his own evils, as madness and wine did the galley. So strong and invincible is man's nature. For how can a vine be moved not in the mariner of a vine, but in the manner of an olive tree? Or on the other hand, how can an olive tree be moved not in the manner of an olive tree, but in the manner of a vine? It is impossible. It cannot be conceived. Neither then is it possible for a man completely to lose the movements of a man. And even those who are deprived of their genital members are not able to deprive themselves of man's desires. Thus Epicurus also mutilated all the offices of a man and of a father of a family and of a citizen and of a friend. But he did not mutilate human desires, for he could not, not more than the lazy academics can cast away or blind their own senses, though they have tried with all their might to do it. What a shame is this, when a man has received from nature measures and rules for the knowing of truth, and does not strive to add to these measures and rules and to improve them, but just the contrary endeavors to take away and destroy whatever enables us to discern the truth. What say you, philosopher, piety and sanctity? What do you think that they are? If you like, I will demonstrate that they are good things. Well, demonstrate it, that our citizens may be turned and honor the deity and may no longer be negligent about things of the highest value. Have you then the demonstrations? I have, and I am thankful. Since then you are well pleased with them. Hear the contrary, that there are no gods, and if there are, they take no care of men, nor is there any fellowship between us and them, and that this piety and sanctity which is talked of among most men is the lying of boasters and sophists, or certainly of legislators, for the purpose of terrifying and checking wrongdoers. Well done, philosopher. You have done something for our citizens. You have brought back all the young men to contempt of things divine. What then? Does not this satisfy you? Learn now that justice is nothing, 
that modesty is folly, that a father is nothing, a son nothing. Well done, philosopher. Persist, persuade the young men, that we may have more with the same opinions as you who say the same as you. From such you and principles as those have grown our well-constituted states. By these was Sparta founded. Lycurgus fixed these opinions in the Spartans by his laws and education, that neither is the servile condition more base than honorable, nor the condition of free men more honorable than base, and that those who died at Thermopylae died from these opinions. And through what other opinions did the Athenians leave their city? Then those who talk thus, marry and beget children, and employ themselves in public affairs and make themselves priests and interpreters, of whom? Of gods who do not exist, and they consult the Pythian priestess that they may hear lies and they repeat the oracles to others. Monstrous impudence and imposture. Man, what are you doing? Are you refuting yourself every day? And will you not give up these frigid attempts? When you eat, where do you carry your hand to? To your mouth or to your eye? When you wash yourself, what do you go into? Do you ever call a pot a dish or a ladle a spit? If I were a slave of any of these men, even if I must be flayed by him dally, I would rack him. If he said, boy, throw some olive oil into the bath, I would take pickle sauce and pour it down on his head. What is this? He would say, an appearance was presented to me, I swear by your genius, which could not be distinguished from oil and was exactly like it. Here, give me the barley drink, he says. I would fill and carry him a dish of sharp sauce. Did I not ask for the barley drink? Yes, master, this is the barley drink. Take it and smell, take it and taste. How do you know, then, if our senses deceive us? If I had three or four fellow slaves of the same opinion, I should force him to hang himself through passion or to change his mind. But now they mock us by using all the things which nature gives, and in words, destroying them. Grateful indeed are men and modest, who, if they do nothing else, are daily eating bread, and yet are shameless enough to say, we do not know if there is a Demeter or her daughter Persephone or a Pluto. Not to mention that they are enjoying the night and the day, the seasons of the year, and the stars, and the sea, and the land, and the cooperation of mankind. And yet they are not moved in any degree by these things to turn their attention to them. But they only seek to belch out their little problem, and when they have exercised their stomach to go off to the bath. But what they shall say, and about what things, or to what persons, and what their hearers shall learn from this talk, they care not even in the least degree, nor do they care if any generous youth, after hearing such talk, should suffer any harm from it, nor, after he has suffered harm, should lose all the seeds of his generous nature, nor if we should give an adulterer help toward being shameless in his acts, nor if a public peculator should lay hold of some cunning excuse from these doctrines nor if another who neglects his parents should be confirmed in his audacity by this teaching. What then, in your opinion, is good or bad? This or that? Why then should a man say any more in reply to such persons as these? Or give them any reason, or listen to any reasons from them, or try to convince them? By Zeus, one might much sooner expect to make certainties change their mind than those who are become so deaf and blind to their own evils. When you try to please everybody, you almost always please nobody. Never sacrifice these three things, your family, your heart, or your dignity. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. John Wooden Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past.
Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. The truth cannot be taught. It can only be realized. Muji. Alexander, Caius, Pompeius. What are these to Diogenes, Heraclitus, and Socrates? These penetrated into the true nature of things, into all causes and all subjects, and upon these did they exercise their power and authority. But as for those, as the extent of their error was, so far did their slavery extend. Do not chase after happiness. It is always in you. At some point you will realize no one else has a say in your life unless you let them. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Marcus Aurelius. This quote encourages immediate action and the practical application of Stoic principles in everyday life. Life has a funny way of surprising us when we're not looking for it. Do not let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. The true measure of success is how many times you can bounce back from failure. Brian Tracy against those who embrace philosophical opinions only in words. The argument called the ruling argument appears to have been proposed from such principles as these. There is in fact a common contradiction between one another in these three positions, each two being in contradiction to the third. The propositions are that everything past must of necessity be true, that an impossibility does not follow a possibility, and that thing is possible which neither is nor t at a t will be true. Diodorus, observing this contradiction, employed the probative force of the first two for the demonstration of this proposition, that nothing is possible which is not true and never will be. Now another will hold these two, that something is possible which is neither true nor ever will be, and that an impossibility does not follow a possibility but he will not allow that everything which is past is necessarily true, as the followers of Cleanthes seem to think, and Antipater copiously defended them. But others maintain the other two propositions, that a thing is possible which is neither true nor will he true, and that everything which is past is necessarily true. But then they will maintain that an impossibility can follow a possibility, but it is impossible to maintain these three propositions because of their common contradiction. If then any man should ask me which of these propositions do I maintain, I will answer him that I do not know. But I have received this story that Diodorus maintained one opinion, the followers of Panthoides, I think, and Cleanthes maintained another opinion, and those of Chrysippus a third, what then is your opinion? I was not made for this purpose to examine the appearances that occur to me and to compare what others say and to form an opinion of my own on the thing. Therefore I differ not at all from the grammarian. Who was Hector's father? Priam. Who were his brothers? Alexander and Dephobus. Who was their mother? Hecuba. I have heard this story. From whom? From Homer. And Hellanicus also, I think, writes about the same things, and perhaps others like him. And what further have I about the ruling argument? Nothing. But if I am a vain man, especially at a banquet, I surprise the guests by enumerating those who have written on these matters. Both Chrysippus has written wonderfully in his first book about possibilities, and Cleanthes 
has written specially on the subject, and Archidemus. Antipater also has written not only in his work about possibilities, but also separately in his work on the ruling argument. Have you not read the work? I have not read it. Read. And what profit will a man have from it? He will be more trifling and impertinent than he is now. For what else have you reigned by reading it? What opinion have you formed on this subject? None. But you will tell us of Helen and Priam, and the island of Calypso, which never was and never will be. And in this matter, indeed, it is of no great importance if you retain the story, but have formed no opinion of your own. But in matters of morality, this happens to us much more than in these things of which we are speaking. Speak to me about good and evil. Listen, the wind from Ilium to Siconian shores brought me. Of things some are good, some are bad, and others are indifferent. The good then are the virtues and the things which partake of the virtues, the bad are the vices and the things which partake of them, and the indifferent are the things which lie between the virtues and the vices, wealth, health, life, death, pleasure, pain. Whence do you know this? Hellanicus says it in his Egyptian history. For what difference does it make to say this? or to say that Diogenes has it in his ethic, or Chrysippus or Cleanthes. Have you then examined any of these things and formed an opinion of your own? Show how you are used to behave in a storm on shipboard? Do you remember this division, when the sail rattles and a man who knows nothing of times and seasons stands by you when you are screaming and says, Tell me, I ask you by the gods what you were saying just now. Is it a vice to suffer shipwreck? Does it participate in vice? Will you not take up a stick and lay it on his head? What have we to do with you, man? We are perishing, and you come to mock us? But if Caesar sent for you to answer a charge, do you remember the distinction? If when you are going in, pale and trembling, a person should come up to you and say, Why do you tremble, man? What is the matter about which you are engaged? Does Caesar who sits within give virtue and vice to those who go into him? You reply, Why do you also mock me and add to my present sorrows? Still tell me, philosopher, tell me why you tremble. Is it not death of which you run the risk, or a prison, or pain of the body, or banishment, or disgrace? What else is there? Is there any vice or anything which partakes of vice? What then did you use to say of these things? What have you to do with me, man? My own evils are enough for me. And you say right. Your own evils are enough for you. Your baseness, your cowardice, your boasting which you showed when you sat in the school. Why did you decorate yourself with what belonged to others? Why did you call yourself a stoic? Observe yourselves thus in your actions, and you will find to what sect you belong. You will find that most of you are Epicureans, a few peripatetics, and those feeble. For wherein will you show that you really consider virtue equal to everything else or even superior? But show me a Stoic if you can, where or how. But you can show me an endless number who utter small arguments of the Stoics. For do the same persons repeat the Epicurean opinions any worse, and the peripatetic do they not handle them also with equal accuracy? Who then is a Stoic? As we call a statue Phidiac, which is fashioned according to the art of Phidias. So show me a man who is fashioned according to the doctrines which he utters. Show me a man who is sick and happy, in danger and happy, dying and happy, in exile and happy, in disgrace and happy. Show him, I desire by the gods to see a Stoic, you cannot show me one fashion so, but show me at least one who is forming, who has shown a tendency to be a Stoic. Do me this favor. Do not grudge an old man seeing a sight which I have not seen yet. Do you think that you must show me the Zeus of Phidias, or the Athena, a work of ivory and gold? 
Let any of you show me a human soul ready to think as God does, and not to blame either God or man, ready not to be disappointed about anything, not to consider himself damaged by anything, not to be angry, not to be envious, not to be jealous. And why should I not say it direct? Desirous from a man to become a god, and in this poor mortal body thinking of his fellowship with Zeus, Show me the man, but you cannot. Why then do you delude yourselves and cheat others? And why do you put on a guise which does not belong to you and walk about being thieves and pilferers of these names and things which do not belong to you? And now I am your teacher, and you are instructed in my school. And I have this purpose, to make you free from restraint, compulsion, hindrance, to make you free, prosperous, happy, looking to God in everything small and great. And you are here to learn and practice these things. Why then do you not finish the work, if you also have such a purpose as you ought to have, and if I, in addition to the purpose, also have such qualification as I ought to have? What is that which is wanting? When I see an artificer and material by him, I expect the work. Here then, is the artificer, here the material, what is it that we want? Is not the thing one that can be taught? It is. Is it not then in our power? The only thing of all that is in our power. Neither wealth is in our power, nor health, nor reputation, nor in a word anything else except the right use of appearances. This is by nature free from restraint. This alone is free from impediment. Why then do you not finish the work? Tell me the reason. For it is either through my fault that you do not finish it, or through your own fault, or through the nature of the thing. The thing itself is possible, and the only thing in our power. It remains then that the fault is either in me or in you, or what is nearer the truth in both. Well then, are you willing that we begin at last to bring such a purpose into this school and to take no notice of the past? Let us only make a beginning. Trust to me and you will see. You are not a product of your circumstances. You are a product of your decisions. You grow mentally weak when your life is too comfortable. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself, this is something I can control, and this is something I cannot control. Enchiridion. This quote emphasizes the importance of understanding our limitations and recognizing what is within our control. By making this distinction, we can focus our energy and efforts more effectively. Resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. Listen or your tongue will make you deaf. The world is a reflection of your inner state of being. Papa G. How everything may he done acceptably to the gods. When someone asked, how may a man eat acceptably to the gods, he answered, if he can eat justly and contentedly, and with equanimity, and temperately and orderly, Will it not be also acceptably to the gods? But when you have asked for warm water and the slave has not heard, or if he did hear has brought only tepid water, or he is not even found to be in the house, then not to be vexed or to burst with passion, is not this acceptable to the gods? How then shall a man endure such persons as this slave? Slave yourself, will you not bear with your own brother? who has Zeus for his progenitor, and is like a son from the same seeds and of the same descent from above? 
but if you have been put in any such higher place, will you immediately make yourself a tyrant? Will you not remember who you are and whom you rule? That they are kinsmen, that they are brethren by nature, that they are the offspring of Zeus? But I have purchased them, and they have not purchased me. Do you see in what direction you are looking? That it is toward the earth, toward the pit, that it is toward these wretched laws of dead men. But toward the laws of the gods you are not looking. Only those who have a why to live can bear almost anything. Worry doesn't take away tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. Believe you can and you're halfway there. Theodore Roosevelt Fill your bowl to the brim and it will spill. Keep sharpening your knife and it will be blunt. Practice self-compassion. We are all human and everyone makes mistakes. Motivation gets you going and habit gets you there. Zig Ziglar If thou shalt intend that which is present, following the rule of right and reason carefully, solidly, meekly, and shalt not intermix any other businesses, but shall study this only to preserve thy spirit unpolluted and pure, and shall cleave unto him without either hope or fear of anything, in all things that thou shalt either do or speak, contenting thyself with heroical truth, thou shalt live happily, and from this there is no man that can hinder thee. Don't be afraid to take risks and try new things. Life is too short to always play it safe. Sometimes you need to stop seeing the good in people and start seeing what they show you. What we do now echoes in eternity. Marcus Aurelius Do not moan, do not complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. The world is a tragedy to those who feel, but a comedy to those who think. You are one decision away from a completely different life. Alex Hormozzi To find out, and set to thyself some certain way and method of contemplation, whereby thou mayest clearly discern and represent unto thyself the mutual change of all things, the one into the other. Bear it in thy mind evermore, and see that thou be truly well exercised in this particular. For there is not anything more effectual to beget true magnanimity. The world doesn't care about your potential. It cares about what you've done. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. The worst type of man behaves as badly in his waking life as some men do in their dreams. Plato, The Republic Embrace it, and you will grow. Do not set yourself on fire to keep others warm. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. Tish Nathan. that we ought not to, he angry with men. And what are the small and the great things among men? What is the cause of assenting to anything, 
the fact that it appears to be true. It is not possible then to assent to that which appears not to be true. Why? Because this is the nature of the understanding, to incline to the true, to be dissatisfied with the false, and in matters uncertain to withhold assent. What is the proof of this? Imagine, if you can, that it is now night. It is not possible. Take away your persuasion that it is day. It is not possible. Persuade yourself or take away your persuasion that the stars are even in number. It is impossible. When, then, any man assents to that which is false, be assured that he did not intend to assent to it as false. For every soul is unwillingly deprived of the truth, as Plato says, but the falsity seemed to him to be true. Well, in Acts, what have we of the like kind as we have here truth or falsehood? We have the fit and the not fit, the profitable and the unprofitable, that which is suitable to a person and that which is not, and whatever is like these. Can then a man think that a thing is useful to him and not choose it? He cannot. How says Medea? Tis true I know what evil I shall do, but passion overpowers the better counsel. She thought that to indulge her passion and take vengeance on her husband was more profitable than to spare her children. It was so, but she was deceived. Show her plainly that she is deceived and she will not do it. But so long as you do not show it, what can she follow except that which appears to herself? Nothing else. Why then are you angry with the unhappy woman that she has been bewildered about the most important things and has become a viper instead of a human creature? And why not, if it is possible, rather pity, as we pity the blind and the lame, those who are blinded and maimed in the faculties which are supreme? Whoever then clearly remembers this, that to man the measure of every act is the appearance, whether the thing appears good or bad, if good, he is free from blame. If bad, himself suffers the penalty. For it is impossible that he who is deceived can be one person, and he who suffers another person. Whoever remembers this will not be angry with any man, will not be vexed at any man, will not revile or blame any man, nor hate nor quarrel with any man. So then all these great and dreadful deeds have this origin, in the appearance? Yes, this origin and no other. The Iliad is nothing else than appearance and the use of appearances. It appeared to Paris to carry off the wife of Menelaus. It appeared to Helen to follow him. If then it had appeared to Menelaus to feel that it was a gain to be deprived of such a wife, what would have happened? Not only a we would the Iliad have been lost, but the Odyssey also. On so small a matter then did such great things depend. But what do you mean by such great things? Wars and civil commotions, and the destruction of many men and cities. And what great matter is this? Is it nothing? But what great matter is the death of many oxen and many sheep, and many nests of swallows or storks being burnt or destroyed? Are these things then like those? Very like. Bodies of men are destroyed and the bodies of oxen and sheep. The dwellings of men are burnt and the nests of storks. What is there in this great or dreadful? Or show me what is the difference between a man's house and a stork's nest, as far as each is a dwelling, except that man builds his little houses of beams and tiles and bricks, and the stork builds them of sticks and mud. Are a stork and a man, then, like things? What say you? In body they are very much alike. Does a man then differ in no respect from a stork? Don't suppose that I say so, but there is no difference in these matters. In what, then, is the difference? Seek, and you will find that there is a difference in another matter. See whether it is not in a man the understanding of what he does. See if it is not in social community, in fidelity, in modesty, in steadfastness, in intelligence, 
Where then is the great good and evil in men? It is where the difference is. If the difference is preserved and remains fenced round, and neither modesty is destroyed nor fidelity nor intelligence, then the man also is preserved. But if any of these things is destroyed and stormed like a city, then the man too perishes. And in this consist the great things. Paris, you say, sustained great damage then when the Hellenes invaded, and when they ravaged Troy, and when his brothers perished, by no means, for no man is damaged by an action which is not his own. But what happened at that time was only the destruction of Storks' nests. Now the ruin of Paris was when he lost the character of modesty, fidelity, regard to hospitality, and to decency. When was Achilles ruined? Was it when Patroclus died? Not so, but it happened when he began to be angry, when he wept for a girl, when he forgot that he was at Troy not to get mistresses but to fight. These things are the ruin of men. This is being besieged. This is the destruction of cities. When right opinions are destroyed, when they are corrupted, when then women are carried off, when children are made captives, and when the men are killed, are these not evils? How is it then that you add to the facts these opinions? Explain this to me also. I shall not do that. But how is it that you say that these are not evils? Let us come to the rules. Produce the precognitions. For it is because this is neglected that we cannot sufficiently wonder at what men do. When we intend to judge of weights, we do not judge by guess. Where we intend to judge of straight and crooked, we do not judge by guess. In all cases where it is our interest to know what is true in any matter, never will any man among us do anything by guess. But in things which depend on the first and on the only cause of doing right or wrong, of happiness or unhappiness, of being unfortunate or fortunate, there only we are inconsiderate and rash. There is then nothing like scales, nothing like a rule. But some appearance is presented, and straightway I act according to it. Must I then suppose that I am superior to Achilles or Agamemnon, so that they by following appearances do and suffer so many evils? And shall not the appearance be sufficient for me? And what tragedy has any other beginning? The Atreus of Euripides, what is it? An appearance. The Oedipus of Sophocles, what is it? An appearance. The Phoenix, an appearance. The Hippolytus, an appearance. What kind of a man then do you suppose him to be who pays no regard to this matter? And what is the name of those who follow every appearance? They are called madmen. Do we then act at all differently? Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Let it go. A fool is known by his speech, and a wise man by silence. Pythagoras For a man to achieve all that is demanded of him, he must regard himself as greater than he is. Give a man a purpose worth living for, and he can survive in any situation. You must either modify your dreams or magnify your skills. Jim Rohn How ridiculous and strange is he that wonders at anything that happens in this life in the ordinary course of nature. Only he who controls himself is free. Learn to be indifferent to what makes no difference. The life of a truly good man is a life of contemplation. Aristotle 
This quote reflects Aristotle's belief that the highest form of human activity is contemplation, the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. Never limit your view of life by any past experience. Never force, don't beg and don't chase. The only thing that's keeping you from getting what you want is the story you keep telling yourself. Tony Robbins. Protection from other men, secured to some extent by the power to expel and by material prosperity, comes in its purest form from a quiet life withdrawn from the multitude. The moment poverty walks in through the door, love and peace toss themselves out of the window. If you need music on the beach, you're missing the point. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. Zeno. I've had a lot of worries in my life, most of which never happened. Never compete with someone who has nothing to lose. We chase what we think will make us happy instead of seeking what will actually make us happy. Jay Shetty If you set your heart on philosophy, be prepared from the very start to be ridiculed and jeered at by many people who will say, suddenly he's come back to us a philosopher, and where do you suppose he got that supercilious look? Now, for your part, do not show a supercilious look, but hold fast to the things that seem best to you as someone who has been assigned to this post by God. And remember that if you persist in your principles, those who at first ridiculed you will later admire you. But if, on the other hand, you are defeated by such people, you will be doubly ridiculed. Set high standards for yourself and live up to your own expectations. Never ruin an apology with an excuse. He who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Seneca Reject your sense of injury, and the injury itself disappears. Good things come to those who wait. We are all imperfectly perfect. Jay Shetty How we should struggle against appearances. Every habit and faculty is maintained and increased by the corresponding actions. The habit of walking by walking. The habit of running by running. If you would be a good reader, read. If a writer, write. But when you shall not have read thirty days in succession, but have done something else, you will know the consequence. In the same way, if you shall have lain down ten days, get up and attempt to make a long walk, and you will see how your legs are weakened. Generally, then, if you would make anything a habit, do it. If you would not make it a habit, do not do it but accustom yourself to do something else in place of it. So it is with respect to the affections of the soul. When you have been angry, you must know that not only has this evil befallen you, but that you have also increased the habit, and in a manner thrown fuel upon fire. When you have been overcome in sexual intercourse with a person, do not reckon this single defeat only, but reckon that you have also nurtured increased your incontinence. For it is impossible for habits and faculties 
some of them not to be produced, when they did not exist before, and others not be increased and strengthened by corresponding acts. In this manner certainly, as philosophers say, also diseases of the mind grow up. For when you have once desired money, if reason be applied to lead to a perception of the evil, the desire is stopped, and the ruling faculty of our mind is restored to the original authority. But if you apply no means of cure, it no longer returns to the same state. But, being again excited by the corresponding appearance, it is inflamed to desire quicker than before. And when this takes place continually, it is henceforth hardened, and the disease of the mind confirms the love of money. For he who has had a fever, and has been relieved from it, is not in the same state that he was before, unless he has been completely cured. Something of the kind happens also in diseases of the soul. Certain traces and blisters are left in it, and unless a man shall completely efface them, when he is again lashed on the same places, the lash will produce not blisters, but sores. If then you wish not to be of an angry temper, do not feed the habit. Throw nothing on it which will increase it. At first keep quiet, and count the days on which you have not been angry. I used to be in passion every day, now every second day, then every third, then every fourth. But if you have intermitted thirty days, make a sacrifice to God. For the habit at first begins to be weakened, and then is completely destroyed. I have not been vexed today, nor the day after, nor yet on any succeeding day during two or three months. But I took care when some exciting things happened. Be assured that you are in a good way. Today, when I saw a handsome person, I did not say to myself, I wish I could lie with her, and happy is her husband. For he who says this says, Happy is her adulterer also. Nor do I picture the rest to my mind, the woman present and stripping herself and lying down by my side. I stroke my head and say, Well done, Epictetus. You have solved a fine little sophism, much finer than that which is called the master sophism. And if even the woman is willing and gives signs and sends messages, and if she also fondle me and come close to me, and I should abstain and be victorious, that would be a sophism beyond that which is named the liar and the quiescent. Over such a victory as this, a man may justly be proud, not for proposing the master sophism. How then shall this be done? Be willing at length to be approved by yourself, be willing to appear beautiful to God, Desire to he in purity with your own pure self and with God. Then when any such appearance visits you, Plato says, Have recourse to expiations, go a suppliant to the temples of the averting deities. It is even sufficient if you resort to the society of noble and just men and compare yourself with them, whether you find one who is living or dead. Go to Socrates and see him lying down with Alcibiades and mocking his beauty. Consider what a victory he at last found that he had gained over himself. What an Olympian victory! In what number he stood from Hercules, so that by the gods one may justly salute him. Hail, wondrous man, you who have conquered not less these sorry boxers and pancratiasts, nor yet those who are like them, the gladiators. By placing these objects on the other side, you will conquer the appearance. You will not be drawn away by it. But in the first place, be not hurried away by the rapidity of the appearance, but say, Appearances, wait for me a little. Let me see who you are and what you are about. Let me put you to the test. And then do not allow the appearance to lead you on and draw lively pictures of the things which will follow. For if you do, it will carry you off wherever it pleases. But rather bring in to oppose it some other beautiful and noble appearance and cast out this base appearance. And if you are accustomed to be exercised in this way, you will see what shoulders, 
what sinews, what strength you have, but now it is only trifling words and nothing more. This is the true athlete, the man who exercises himself against such appearances. Stay, wretch, do not be carried away. Great is the combat, divine is the work. It is for kingship, for freedom, for happiness, for freedom from perturbation. Remember God, call on Him as a helper and protector, as men at sea call on the Dioscuri in a storm. For what is a greater storm than that which comes from appearances which are violent and drive away the reason? For the storm itself, what else is it but an appearance? For take away the fear of death, and suppose as many thunders and lightnings as you please, and you will know what calm and serenity there is in the ruling faculty. But if you have once been defeated and say that you will conquer hereafter, then say the same again, be assured that you at last be in so wretched a condition and so weak that you will not even know afterward that you are doing wrong. But you will even begin to make apologies for your wrongdoing. And then you will confirm the saying of Hesiod to be true. With constant ills the dilatory strives. You will never understand the damage you did to someone until the same thing is done to you. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. In absentia lucis, tenebrae vincunt, in the absence of light, Darkness prevails. Latin proverb. Success is as dangerous as failure. Hope is as hollow as fear. Call it what you want. But it's one day in retrospect the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. Your biggest opponent isn't the person you're facing. It's the person you see in the mirror. David Goggins Those natural desires which entail no pain when unsatisfied, though pursued with an intense effort, are also due to groundless opinion. And it is not because of their own nature they are not got rid of, but because of man's groundless opinions. There is no better way to save yourself than saving money every day. Compound interest can do wonders. Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. The goal of life is to live in accordance with reason. Zeno believed that reason should guide our actions and decisions, leading us towards a life of virtue and fulfillment. Never trust a lonely friend because, while some find strength in solitude, others may lose their way in it. Learn as if you were not reaching your goal, and as though you were scared of missing it. Rich people have small TVs and big libraries, and poor people have small libraries and big TVs. Zig Ziglar Whensoever any man doth trespass against other, Presently consider with thyself what it was that he did suppose to be good, what to be evil when he did trespass. For this when thou knowest, thou wilt pity him, thou wilt have no occasion either to wonder or to be angry. For either thou thyself dost yet live in that error and ignorance, as that thou dost suppose either that very thing that he doth, or some other like worldly thing, to be good, and so thou art bound to pardon him if he have done that which thou in the like case wouldst have done thyself. 
Or if so be, that thou dost not any more suppose the same things to be good or evil, that he doth, how canst thou but be gentle unto him that is in an error? Life is not fair, but it's still good. When we love, we always strive to become better than we are. When we strive to become better than we are, everything around us becomes better too. Quad me, nutrit me, destruit. What nourishes me destroys me. Latin proverb. Enjoy present pleasures in such a way as not to injure future ones. It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. It is a reflection of your lack of willpower, discipline, and your piss-poor life choices. We chase what we think will make us happy instead of seeking what will actually make us happy. Jay Shetty How from the fact that we are akin to God, a man may proceed to the consequences. If the things are true which are said by the philosophers about the kinship between God and man, what else remains for men to do than what Socrates did? Never in reply to the question, to what country you belong, say that you are an Athenian or a Corinthian, but that you are a citizen of the world. For why do you say that you are an Athenian? And why do you not say that you belong to the small nook only into which your poor body was cast at birth? Is it not plain that you call yourself an Athenian or Corinthian from the place which has a greater authority and comprises not only that small nook itself and all your family, but even the whole country from which the stock of your progenitors is derived down to you? He then who has observed with intelligence the administration of the world and has learned that the greatest and supreme and the most comprehensive community is that which is composed of men and God and that from God have descended the seeds not only to my father and grandfather but to all beings which are generated on the earth and are produced and particularly to rational beings. For these only are by their nature formed to have communion with God, being by means of reason conjoined with Him. Why should not such a man call himself a citizen of the world? Why not a son of God? And why should he be afraid of anything which happens among men? Is kinship with Caesar or with any other of the powerful in Rome sufficient to enable us to live in safety and above contempt and without any fear at all? And to have God for your Maker and Father and Guardian, shall not this release us from sorrows and fears? But a man may say, Whence shall I get bread to eat when I have nothing? And how do slaves and runaways, on what do they rely when they leave their masters? Do they rely on their lands or slaves or their vessels of silver? They rely on nothing but themselves, and food does not fail them. And shall it be necessary for one among us who is a philosopher to travel into foreign parts and trust to and rely on others and not to take care of himself? And shall he be inferior to irrational animals and more cowardly, each of which, being self-sufficient, neither fails to get its proper food nor to find a suitable way of living and one conformable to nature? I indeed think that the old man ought to be sitting here not to contrive how you may have no mean thoughts nor mean and ignoble talk about yourselves, but to take care that there be not among us any young men of such a mind that when they have recognized their kinship to God and that we are fettered by these bonds, the body, I mean, and its possessions and whatever else on account of them is necessary to us for the economy and commerce of life, they should intend to throw off these things as if they were burdens painful and intolerable, and to depart to their kinsmen. 
But this is the labor that your teacher and instructor ought to be employed upon, if he really were what he should be. You should come to him and say, Epictetus, we can no longer endure being bound to this poor body, and feeding it and giving it drink and rest and cleaning it, and for the sake of the body complying with the wishes of these and of those. Are not these things indifferent and nothing to us, and is not death no evil? And are we not in a manner kinsmen of God, and did we not come from Him? Allow us to depart to the place from which we came. Allow us to be released at last from these bonds by which we are bound and weighed down. Here there are robbers and thieves and courts of justice and those who are named tyrants and think that they have some power over us by means of the body and its possessions. Permit us to show them that they have no power over any man. And I, on my part, would say, Friends, wait for God. When he shall give the signal and release you from this service, then go to him. But for the present, endure to dwell in this place where he has put you. Short indeed is this time of your dwelling here, and easy to bear for those who are so disposed. For what tyrant or what thief or what courts of justice are formidable to those who have thus considered as things of no value the body and the possessions of the body? Wait then. Do not depart without a reason. Something like this ought to be said by the teacher to ingenuous youths. But now what happens? The teacher is a lifeless body, and you are lifeless bodies. When you have been well filled today, you sit down and lament about the morrow, how you shall get something to eat. Wretch, if you have it, you will have it. If you have it not, you will depart from life. The door is open. Why do you grieve? Where does there remain any room for tears? And where is there occasion for flattery? Why shall one man envy another? Why should a man admire the rich or the powerful, even if they be both very strong and of violent temper? For what will they do to us? We shall not care for that which they can do, and what we do care for, that they cannot do. How did Socrates behave with respect to these matters? Why, in what other way than a man ought to do who was convinced that he was a kinsman of the gods? If you say to me now, said Socrates to his judges, we will acquit you on the condition that you no longer discourse in the way in which you have hitherto discoursed, nor trouble either our young or our old men, I shall answer. You make yourselves ridiculous by thinking that if one of our commanders has appointed me to a certain post, it is my duty to keep and maintain it, and to resolve to die a thousand times rather than desert it. But if God has put us in any place and way of life, we ought to desert it. Socrates speaks like a man who is really a kinsman of the gods, but we think about ourselves as if we were only stomachs and intestines and shameful parts. We fear, we desire, we flatter those who are able to help us in these matters, and we fear them also. A man asked me to write to Rome about him, a man who, as most people thought, had been unfortunate, for formerly he was a man of rank and rich, but had been stripped of all and was living here. I wrote on his behalf in a submissive manner. But when he had read the letter, he gave it back to me and said, I wished for your help, not your pity. No evil has happened to me. Thus also Musonius Rufus, in order to try me, used to say, This and this will befall you from your master. And I replied that these were things which happen in the ordinary course of human affairs. Why then, said he, should I ask him for anything when I can obtain it from you? For in fact, what a man has from himself, it is superfluous and foolish to receive from another. Shall I then, who am able to receive from myself greatness of soul and a generous spirit, receive from you land and money or a magisterial office? I hope not. I will not be so ignorant about my own possessions. But when a man is cowardly and mean, 
What else must be done for him than to write letters as you would about a corpse? Please to grant us the body of a certain person, and a sextarius of poor blood. For such a person is, in fact, a carcass, and a sextarius of blood, and nothing more. But if he were anything more, he would know that one man is not miserable through the means of another. Never think twice about investments in yourself. They pay dividends for a long time. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. The superior man understands what is right. The inferior man understands what will sell. Confucius. One day all those late nights and early mornings will pay off. When talking to people, look them in the eye and on the face. This will make you more confident in front of others. I cannot believe in a God who wants to be praised all the time. Friedrich Nietzsche We must also reflect that of desires some are natural, others are groundless, and that of the natural, some are necessary as well as natural, and some natural only, and of the necessary desires some are necessary if we are to be happy, some if the body is to be rid of uneasiness, some if we are even to live. He who has a clear and certain understanding of these things will direct every preference and aversion towards securing health of body and tranquility of mind, seeing that this is the sum and end of a happy life. For the end of all our actions is to be free from pain and fear, and when once we have attained all this, the tempest of the soul is laid, seeing that the living creature has no need to go in search of something that is lacking, nor to look for anything else by which the good of the soul and of the body will be fulfilled. When we are pained because of the absence of pleasure, then and then only do we feel the need of pleasure. Wherefore we call pleasure the Alpha and Omega of a happy life. Pleasure is our first and kindred good. It is the starting point of every choice and of every aversion, and to it we come back, inasmuch as we make feeling the rule by which to judge of every good thing. Life becomes so peaceful when your anger for the people who hurt you turns into sympathy for them. If you want to be better than someone else, that's the reason why you aren't. To be wronged is nothing, unless you continue to remember it. Confucius Don't be afraid of a shadow, it just means there's a light nearby. Careful who you marry, and even more careful who you have kids with. The path to success will leave you calloused, bruised, and very tired. It will also leave you empowered. David Goggins Receive temporal blessings without ostentation, when they are sent, and thou shalt be able to part with them with all readiness and facility, when they are taken from thee again. Remember, a lot of people don't deserve your time. Be selfish with your time. Nothing costs so much in life as illness, and ignoring an illness. It is not things themselves that trouble us, but our judgments about those things. Epictetus 
This quote emphasizes Stoicism's focus on controlling our internal reactions and perceptions to external events. No work is beneath you. The only thing that should be beneath you is your big ego. Work hard in silence and show your skills at the job you get rather than criticizing the job. Happiness is something that multiplies when it is divided. Everything you experience today is the result of choices you have made in the past. Jack Canfield Certain miscellaneous matters, as bad tragic actors cannot sing alone but in company with many, so some persons cannot walk about alone. Man, if you are anything, both walk alone and talk to yourself, and do not hide yourself in the chorus. Examine a little at last, look around, stir yourself up, that you may know who you are. When a man drinks water, or does anything for the sake of practice, whenever there is an opportunity he tells it to all. I drink water. Is it for this that you drink water? For the purpose of drinking water? Man, if it is good for you to drink, drink. But if not, you are acting ridiculously. But if it is good for you and you do drink, say nothing about it to those who are displeased with water drinkers. What then do you wish to please these very men? Of things that are done, some are done with a final purpose, some according to occasion, others with a certain reference to circumstances, others for the purpose of complying with others, and some according to a fixed scheme of life. You must root out of men these two things, arrogance and distrust. Arrogance, then, is the opinion that you want nothing. But distrust is the opinion that you cannot be happy when so many circumstances surround you. Arrogance is removed by confutation. And Socrates was the first who practiced this. And that the thing is not impossible. Inquire and seek. This search will do you no harm. And in a manner this is philosophizing. To seek how it is possible to employ desire and aversion without impediment. I am superior to you, for my father is a man of consular rank. Another says, I have been a tribune, but you have not. If we were horses, would you say, my father was swifter? I have much barley and fodder or elegant neck ornaments. If then, while you were saying this, I said, be it so, let us run then. Well, is there nothing in a man such as running in a horse? by which it will he known which is superior and inferior? Is there not modesty, fidelity, justice? Show yourself superior in these, that you may be superior as a man. If you tell me that you can kick violently, I also will say to you that you are proud of that which is the act of an ass. Often a very old man has no other proof of his long life than his age. Listen to the people who tell you what you don't want to hear. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. Lewis Holtz Do every act of your life as though it were the very last act of your life. If you want to do something, don't delay, but don't sacrifice what you want for what you want right now. Make a commitment to yourself to become more than what you are right now. Les Brown Thou must continually ponder and consider with thyself what manner of men they be, 
and for their minds and understandings what is their present estate, whose good word and testimony thou dost desire. For then neither wilt thou see cause to complain of them that offend against their wills, or find any want of their applause, if once thou dost but penetrate into the true force, and ground both of their opinions and of their desires. No soul, saith he, is willingly bereft of the truth, and by consequent neither of justice or temperance or kindness and mildness, nor of anything that is of the same kind. It is most needful that thou shouldst always remember this, for so shalt thou be far more gentle and moderate towards all men. People are frugal in guarding their personal property, but as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of one thing in which it is right to be stingy. Be civil to all, sociable to many, familiar with few, friend to many, enemy to none. Reject your sense of injury, and the injury itself disappears. Marcus Aurelius Willpower is to the mind like a strong, blind man who carries on his shoulders a lame man who can see. Overthinking ruins you. It ruins the situation, twists things around, makes you worry about futile questions, and makes everything much worse than it actually is. When you catch a glimpse of your potential, that's when passion is born. Zig Ziglar As one who had lived, and were now to die by right whatsoever is yet remaining, bestow that holy as a gracious overplus upon a virtuous life. Love and affect that only, whatsoever it be that happeneth, and is by the fates appointed unto thee. For what can be more reasonable? And as anything doth happen unto thee by way of cross or calamity, call to mind presently, and set before thine eyes the examples of some other men, to whom the selfsame thing did once happen likewise. Well, what did they? They grieved, they wondered, they complained, and where are they now, all dead and gone? Wilt thou also be like one of them, or rather leaving to men of the world, whose life both in regard of themselves and them that they converse with is nothing but mere mutability, or men of as fickle minds as fickle bodies, ever changing and soon change themselves, let it be thine only care and study how to make a right use of all such accidents, for there is good use to be made of them, and they will prove fit matter for thee to work upon, if it shall be both thy care and thy desire that whatsoever thou doest, Thou thyself mayst like and approve thyself for it. And both these see that thou remember well, according as the diversity of the matter of the action that thou art about shall require. Look within. Within is the fountain of all good. Such a fountain, where springing waters can never fail. So thou dig still deeper and deeper. One has to understand that braveness is not the absence of fear, but rather the strength to keep on going forward despite the fear. Hard times may have held you down, but they will not last forever. There is only one way to happiness and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. Epictetus Expect nothing and you will never get disappointed. Very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. Don't give up, and know that there is always someone out there who believes in you and who loves you just the way that you are. Nick Vujicic
my answer, full of justice and equity, should be this. Thy speech is not right, O man. If thou supposest that he that is of any worth at all should apprehend either life or death as a matter of great hazard and danger, and should not make this rather his only care, to examine his own actions, whether just or unjust, whether actions of a good or of a wicked man. For thus in very truth stands the case, O ye men of Athens, what place or station soever a man either hath chosen to himself, judging it best for himself, or is by lawful authority put and settled in, therein do I think, all appearance of danger notwithstanding, that he should continue, as one who feareth neither death nor anything else, so much as he feareth to commit anything that is vicious and shameful. But, O noble sir, consider, I pray, whether true generosity and true happiness do not consist in somewhat else rather than in the preservation either of our or other men's lives. Prioritizing yourself is not selfish. Don't worry about losing. It's losing before you begin. The truth is, like a lion, you don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. Augustine of Hippo Life is a one-time offer. Use it well. When true virtue is lost, good nature appears. When good nature is lost, justice appears. When justice is lost, decency appears. The rules of decency are only the semblance of truth and the beginning of all disorder. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. Tish Nathan. Wickedness in general doth not hurt the world. Particular wickedness doth not hurt any other. Only unto him it is hurtful. Whosoever he be that offends, unto whom in great favor and mercy it is granted, that whensoever he himself shall but first desire it, he may be presently delivered of it. Unto my free will, my neighbor's free will, whoever he be, as his life or his bode, is altogether indifferent. For though we are all made one for another, yet have our minds and understandings each of them their own proper and limited jurisdiction. For else another man's wickedness might be my evil, which God would not have, that it might not be in another man's power to make me unhappy, which nothing now can do but mine own wickedness. There is no disgrace in honest failure. There is disgrace in fearing to fail. Appear weak when you are strong, strong when you are weak. Change is the law of the universe. You can be a millionaire or a pauper in an instant. Bhagavad Gita If you got away with a bad decision, it doesn't make it a good decision. Now, where can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul? Review your goals twice every day in order to be focused on achieving them. Les Brown Consider in my mind, for example's sake, the times of Vespasian. Thou shalt see but the same things, some marrying, some bringing up children, some sick, some dying, some fighting, some feasting, some merchandising, some tilling, some flattering, some boasting, some suspecting, some undermining, some wishing to die, some fretting and murmuring at their present estate, some wooing, some hoarding, 
some seeking after magistracies, and some after kingdoms, and is not that their age quite over and ended? Again, consider now the times of Trajan. There, likewise, thou seest the very selfsame things, and that age also is now over and ended. In the like manner, consider other periods, both of times and of whole nations, and see how many men, after they had with all their might and main intended and prosecuted some one worldly thing or other, did soon after drop away, and were resolved into the elements. But especially thou must call to mind them, whom thou thyself in thy lifetime hast known much distracted about vain things, and in the meantime neglecting to do that, and closely and inseparably, as fully satisfied with it, to adhere unto it, which their own proper constitution did require. And here thou must remember that thy carriage in every business must be according to the worth and due proportion of it. For so shalt thou not easily be tired out and vexed if thou shalt not dwell upon small matters longer than is fitting. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you. Work on mastering your mind. Prioritize your mental health like you would your physical health. Exercise your mind with new challenges and positive self-talk. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputations from storms and tempests. Epictetus Forgiveness is not for the other person, it's for your peace of mind. When you're testing to see how deep water is, never use two feet. You are a function of what the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is a function of what the whole ocean is doing. Alan Watts From some high place as it were to look down, and to behold here flocks and their sacrifices without number, and all kind of navigation, some in a rough and stormy sea, and some in a calm, the general differences or different estates of things, some that are now first upon being, the several and mutual relations of those things that are together, and some other things that are at their last, their lives also, who were long ago, and theirs who shall be hereafter, and the present estate and life of those many nations of barbarians that are now in the world, thou must likewise consider in thy mind and how many there be, who never so much as heard of thy name, how many that will soon forget it, how many who but even now did commend thee, within a very little while perchance will speak ill of thee, so that neither fame, nor honor, nor anything else that this world doth afford, is worth the while. The sum then of all, whatsoever doth happen unto thee, whereof God is the cause, to accept it contentedly, Whatsoever thou doest, whereof thou thyself art the cause, to do it justly, which will be if both in thy resolution and in thy action, thou have no further end than to do good unto others, as being that, which by thy natural constitution as a man, thou art bound unto. To be the best you must be able to handle the worst. No matter how much it hurts, hold your head up and keep going. The soul is eternal and imperishable. It is not subject to birth or death. Bhagavad Gita The saints are the sinners who keep on trying.
person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. If you don't like how things are, change it. You're not a tree. Jim Rohn Do not ever conceive anything impossible to man which by thee cannot or not without much difficulty be effected. But whatsoever in general thou canst conceive possible and proper unto any man, think that very possible unto thee also. Obstacles aren't roadblocks, they're road signs. You'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Epictetus emphasizes the importance of our internal response to external events. We have the power to choose our reaction, shaping our experience and well-being. You have two choices, to control your mind or to let your mind control you. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. If you learn from defeat, you haven't really lost. Zig Ziglar It is all one to see these things for a hundred of years together, or but for three years. You will never find a friend who will be as faithful as an old wife, an old dog, and ready money. Do not make a permanent decision based on temporary emotions. Have I done something for the common good? Then I share in the benefits. Marcus Aurelius Your days are numbered. Use them to throw open the windows of your soul to the sun. If you do not, the sun will soon set, and you with it. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive. To think. To enjoy. To love. Feelings, whether of compassion or irritation, should be welcomed, recognized and treated on an absolutely equal basis, because both are ourselves. Tishnat Han It is common to all trades and professions to mind and intend that only, which now they are about, and the instrument whereby they work. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. Finding the lesson behind every adversity will be the one important thing that helps get you through it. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Franklin D. Roosevelt Your friends' problems become your problems. The smaller your social circle, the fewer problems you have. Life is a journey, not a destination. Happiness is not something you postpone for the future. It is something you design for the present. Jim Rohn Go to the quality of the cause from which the effect doth proceed. Behold it by itself bare and naked, separated from all that is material. 
then consider the utmost bounds of time that that cause, thus and thus qualified, can subsist and abide. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. The moment when you want to quit is the moment when you need to keep pushing. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Cicero Stress is temporary, but the lessons you learn from it can last a lifetime. Life is a race against time, so have a good time. You are the witness of all experiences. You are not affected by them. Papa G. As the ordinary shows of the theater and of other such places, when thou art presented with them, affect thee, as the same thing still seen and in the same fashion, make the sight ingrateful and tedious, so must all the things that we see all our life long affect us. For all things above and below are still the same, and from the same causes. When then will there be an end? Learn to handle rejection gracefully. It's a part of life. No one cares except family. Start saving your money. Don't spend it on homes you can't afford, fancy cars, and running your credit cards to the max. In the end, you'll be much happier. The only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. Henry Ford Never disturb them again once you feel free. Do not go to the past. Not for happiness, not for justification, not for excuses. All of the great geniuses of the world were inspired and driven by their desire to enrich the lives of others. Brian Tracy How happy is man in this his power that hath been granted unto him, that he needs not do anything but what God shall approve, and that he may embrace contentedly whatsoever God doth send unto him. Remember, sometimes the things that break your heart end up fixing your vision. Life is a boxing game. Defeat is not declared when you fall down. It is declared when you refuse to get up. Silence is a true friend who never betrays. Confucius Random wandering will not move you forward. It will instead disappoint and frustrate you and make you anxious and unhappy and hard to get along with. We must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul, just as a meal does for the body. The only real limitation on your abilities is the level of your desires. If you want it badly enough, there are no limits on what you can achieve. Brian Tracy Children's anger, mere babels, wretched souls bearing up dead bodies, that they may not have their fall so soon, even as it is in that common dirge song. Life is inherently risky. There is only one big risk you should avoid at all costs, and that is the risk of doing nothing.
Only when the last tree has been cut down, the last fish been caught, and the last stream poisoned, will we realize we cannot eat money. The attention you give to any action should be in due proportion to its worth. Marcus Aurelius Being private, staying low-key, and not telling everyone everything is self-care. Make time for fun. Take Souls, David Goggins. For it is not lawful that anything that is of another and inferior kind and nature, be it what it will, as either popular applause or honor or riches or pleasures, should be suffered to confront and contest, as it were, with that which is rational and operatively good. For all these things, if once though but for a while, they begin to please, they presently prevail, and pervert a man's mind, or turn a man from the right way. Do thou therefore, I say, absolutely and freely make choice of that which is best, and stick unto it. Now that they say is best, which is most profitable, if they mean profitable to man as he is a rational man, stand thou to it and maintain it. But if they mean profitable as he is a creature, only reject it. And from this thy tent and conclusion keep off carefully all plausible shows and colors of external appearance, that thou mayest be able to discern things rightly. Be careful who you marry, and even more careful who you have kids with. He who is wise is content with his lot, whatever it may be without wishing for what he has not. Do not train a child to learn by force or harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds, so that you may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. Plato Today is the oldest you've ever been in your life, and the youngest you'll ever be again. Life is just a race against time, so have a good time. To acquire true self-power, you have to feel beneath no one, be immune to criticism, and be fearless. Deepak Chopra The motion of the mind is not as the motion of a dart. For the mind, when it is wary and cautelous, and by way of diligent circumspection turneth herself many ways, may then as well be said to go straight on to the object, as when it useth no such circumspection. A denied expectation hurts more than a denied hope, while a fulfilled hope makes us happier than a fulfilled expectation. Do not ignore a problem you see coming from a mile away. That foresight is a gift. Don't squander it. Failure is not falling down, but refusing to get up. Chinese proverb. No one will ever give you love because you want him or her to give it. Real love moves freely in both directions. Don't waste your time on anything else. You are lonely not because no one needs you, but because you care about who is next to you. Sometimes adversity is what you need to face in order to become successful. Zig Ziglar Let thy thoughts ever run upon them, 
who once for some one thing or other were moved with extraordinary indignation, who were once in the highest pitch of either honor or calamity, or mutual hatred and enmity, or of any other fortune or condition whatsoever, then consider what's now become of all those things. All is turned to smoke, all to ashes, and a mere fable, and perchance not so much as a fable, as also whatsoever is of this nature, as Fabius Catilinus in the field, Lucius Lupus, and Stertinius, at Baie Tiberius, at Capre and Velius Rufus, and all such examples of vehement prosecution in worldly matters. Let these also run in thy mind at the same time, and how vile every object of such earnest and vehement prosecution is, and how much more agreeable to true philosophy it is for a man to carry himself in every matter that offers itself, justly and moderately, as one that followeth the gods with all simplicity. For for a man to be proud and high-conceited that he is not proud and high-conceited is of all kind of pride and presumption the most intolerable. People often confuse stress with responsibility. Early to bed and early to rise in old age makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. Do not let yourself be guided by the feeling of lust or love. In all things have no preferences. Miyamoto Musashi Bad times are actually a boon because they wake you up to the good things you never paid attention to. Do not put off important medical checkups. People who consider themselves victims of their circumstances will always remain victims unless they develop a greater vision for their lives. Jack Canfield Consider them through all actions and occupations of their lives, as when they eat and when they sleep, when they are in the act of necessary exoneration and when in the act of lust, again, when they either are in their greatest exaltation and in the middle of all their pomp and glory, or being angry and displeased in great state and majesty, as from an higher place they chide and rebuke, how base and slavish but a little while ago they were fain to be that they might come to this, and within a very little while what will be their estate when death hath once seized upon them. Just because you can't see the point behind a challenging time doesn't mean there isn't one. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. The only real failure in life is not to be true to the best one knows. Buddha The calmer you are, the clearer you think. Act like you have been there before. Now I see that if one doesn't know how to die, one can hardly know how to live, because death is a part of life. Tishnat Han. Against or to those who readily tell their own affairs. When a man has seemed to us to have talked with simplicity about his own affairs, how is it that at last we are ourselves also induced to discover to him our own secrets, and we think this to be candid behavior? In the first place, because it seems unfair for a man to have listened to the affairs of his neighbor, and not to communicate to him also in turn our own affairs. Next, because we think that we shall not present to them the appearance of candid men when we are silent about our own affairs. Indeed, men are often accustomed to say, I have told you all my affairs. Will you tell me nothing of your own? Where is this done? 
Besides, we have also this opinion that we can safely trust him who has already told us his own affairs. For the notion rises in our mind that this man could never divulge our affairs, because he would be cautious that we also should not divulge his. In this way also the incautious are caught by the soldiers at Rome. A soldier sits by you in a common dress and begins to speak ill of Caesar. Then you, as if you had received a pledge of his fidelity by his having begun the abuse, utter yourself also what you think, and then you are carried off in chains. Something of this kind happens to us generally. Now as this man has confidently entrusted his affairs to me, shall I also do so to any man whom I meet? For when I have heard, I keep silence if I am of such a disposition. But he goes forth and tells all men what he has heard. Then if I hear what has been done, if I be a man like him, I resolve to be revenged. I divulge what he has told me. I both disturb others and am disturbed myself. But if I remember that one man does not injure another, and that every man's acts injure and profit him, I secure this, that I do not anything like him. But still I suffer what I do suffer through my own silly talk. True. But it is unfair when you have heard the secrets of your neighbor for you in turn to communicate nothing to him. Did I ask you for your secrets, my man? Did you communicate your affairs on certain terms, that you should in return hear mine also? If you are a babbler and think that all who meet you are friends, do you wish me also to be like you? But why, if you did well in entrusting your affairs to me, and it is not well for me to entrust mine to you, do you wish me to be so rash? It is just the same as if I had a cask which is watertight, and you one with a hole in it, and you should come and deposit with me your wine that I might put it into my cask, and then should complain that I also did not entrust my wine to you, for you have a cask with a hole in it. How then is there any equality here? You entrusted your affairs to a man who is faithful and modest, to a man who thinks that his own actions alone are injurious and useful, and that nothing external is. Would you have me entrust mine to you, a man who has dishonored his own faculty of will, and who wishes to gain some small bit of money or some office or promotion in the court, even if you should be going to murder your own children like Medea? Where is this equality? But show yourself to me to be faithful, modest and steady. Show me that you have friendly opinions. Show that your cask has no hole in it. And you will see how I shall not wait for you to trust me with your affairs. But I myself shall come to you and ask you to hear mine. For who does not choose to make use of a good vessel? Who does not value a benevolent and faithful adviser? Who will not willingly receive a man who is ready to bear a share, as we may say, of the difficulty of his circumstances, and by this very act to ease the burden by taking a part of it? True, but I trust you. You do not trust me. In the first place, not even do you trust me. But you are a babbler, and for this reason you cannot hold anything. For indeed, if it is true that you trust me, trust your affairs to me only. But now, whenever you see a man at leisure, you seat yourself by him and say, Brother, I have no friend more benevolent than you nor dearer. I request you to listen to my affairs. And you do this even to those who are not known to you at all. But if you really trust me, it is plain that you trust me because I am faithful and modest not because I have told my affairs to you. Allow me then to have the same opinion about you. Show me that, if one man tells his affairs to another, he who tells them is faithful and modest. For if this were so, I would go about and tell my affairs to every man, if that would make me faithful and modest. But the thing is not so, and it requires no common opinions. If then, 
you see a man who is busy about things not dependent on his will and subjecting his will to them, you must know that this man has ten thousand persons to compel and hinder him. He has no need of pitch or the wheel to compel him to declare what he knows, but a little girl's nod, if it should so happen, will move him. The blandishment of one who belongs to Caesar's court, desire of a magistracy or of an inheritance, and things without end of that sort. You must remember then, among general principles, that secret discourses require fidelity and corresponding opinions. But where can we now find these easily? Or if you cannot answer that question, let someone point out to me a man who can say, I care only about the things which are my own, the things which are not subject to hindrance, the things which are by nature free. This I hold to be the nature of the good. But let all other things be as they are allowed. I do not concern myself. If you expect the world to be fair with you because you are fair, that's like expecting the lion not to eat you because you didn't eat him. A private life is a happy life. Intelligenti pauca. Few words suffice for the intelligent. Latin proverb. Never sacrifice your progress for a friend. They might not do the same if the tables were turned. You can keep friends with the people you want to emulate not the people that you think will be most likely to accept you. The people you associate with will shape your future. It's what you practice in private that you will be rewarded for in public. Tony Robbins That which must be the subject of thy consideration is either the matter itself, or the dogma, or the operation, or the true sense and signification. Do not be afraid to make a hard choice. The hard choices are the best ones you end up making. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. The struggles you face introduce you to your strengths. Epictetus How much you can learn when you fail determines how far you will go in achieving your goals. Sometimes it feels better not to talk at all about anything. Successful people are simply those with successful habits. Jack Canfield When children come clapping their hands and crying out, Today is the good Saturnalia, do we say, The Saturnalia are not good, by no means, but we clap our hands also. Do you also then, when you are not able to make a man change his mind, be assured that he is a child, and clap your hands with him. And if you do not choose to do this, keep silent. A man must keep this in mind. And when he is called to any such difficulty, he should know that the time is come for showing if he has been instructed. For he who has come into a difficulty is like a young man from a school who has practiced the resolution of syllogisms. And if any person proposes to him an easy syllogism, he says, Rather propose to me a syllogism which is skillfully complicated that I may exercise myself on it. Even athletes are dissatisfied with slight young men and say, He cannot lift me. This is a youth of noble disposition. But when the time of trial has come, one of you must weep and say, I wish that I had learned more. A little more of what? If you did not learn these things in order to show them in practice, 
Why did you learn them? I think that there is someone among you who are sitting here, who is suffering like a woman in labor and saying, Oh, that such a difficulty does not present itself to me as that which has come to this man. Oh, that I should be wasting my life in a corner when I might be crowned at Olympia. When will anyone announce to me such a contest? Such ought to be the disposition of all of you. Even among the gladiators of Caesar, there are some who complain grievously that they are not brought forward and matched, and they offer up prayers to God and address themselves to their superintendents entreating that they might fight. And will no one among you show himself such? I would willingly take a voyage for this purpose and see what my athlete is doing, how he is studying his subject. I do not choose such a subject, he says. Why? Is it in your power to take what subject you choose? There has been given to you such a body as you have, such parents, such brethren, such a country, such a place in your country. Then you come to me and say, Change my subject. Have you not abilities which enable you to manage the subject which has been given to you? It is your business to propose. It is mine to exercise myself well. However, you do not say so, but you say, Do not propose to me such a tropic, but such. Do not urge against me such an objection, but such. There will be a time, perhaps, when tragic actors will suppose that they are masks and buskins and the long cloak. I say these things, man, are your material and subject. Utter something that we may know whether you are a tragic actor or a buffoon, for both of you have all the rest in common. If anyone then should take away the tragic actor's buskins and his mask and introduce him on the stage as a phantom, is the tragic actor lost or does he still remain? If he has voice, he still remains. An example of another kind. Assume the governorship of a province. I assume it, and when I have assumed it, I show how an instructed man behaves. Lay aside the laticlave, and clothing yourself in rags, come forward in this character. What then have I not the power of displaying a good voice? How then do you now appear, as a witness summoned by God? Come forward, you, and bear testimony for me, for you are worthy to be brought forward as a witness by me. Is anything external to the will good or bad? Do I hurt any man? Have I made every man's interest dependent on any man except himself? What testimony do you give for God? I am in a wretched condition, Master, and I am unfortunate. No man cares for me. No man gives me anything. All blame me. All speak ill of me. Is this the evidence that you are going to give and disgrace his summons who has conferred so much honor on you and thought you worthy of being called to bear such testimony? But suppose that he who has the power has declared, I judge you to be impious and profane. What has happened to you? I have been judged to be impious and profane. Nothing else, nothing else. But if the same person had passed judgment on an hypothetical syllogism and had made a declaration, the conclusion that if it is day, it is light, I declare to be false. What has happened to the hypothetical syllogism? Who is judged in this case? Who has been condemned? The hypothetical syllogism, or the man who has been deceived by it, does he then who has the power of making any declaration about you know what is pious or impious? Has he studied it and has he learned it? Where? From whom? Then is it the fact that a musician pays no regard to him who declares that the lowest chord in the lyre is the highest, nor yet a geometrician, if he declares that the lines from the center of a circle to the circumference are not equal? And shall he who is really instructed pay any regard to the uninstructed man when he pronounces judgment on what is pious and what is impious, on what is just and unjust? 
Oh, the signal wrong done by the instructed. Did they learn this here? Will you not leave the small arguments about these matters to others, to lazy fellows, that they may sit in a corner and receive their sorry pay, or grumble that no one gives them anything? And will you not come forward and make use of what you have learned? For it is not these small arguments that are wanted now. The writings of the Stoics are full of them. What then is the thing which is wanted? A man who shall apply them, one who by his acts shall bear testimony to his words. Assume, I entreat you, this character, that we may no longer use in the schools the examples of the ancients, but may have some example of our own. To whom then does the contemplation of these matters belong? To him who has leisure, for man is an animal that loves contemplation. But it is shameful to contemplate these things as runaway slaves do. We should sit, as in a theater, free from distraction, and listen at one time to the tragic actor, at another time to the lute player, and not do as slaves do. As soon as the slave has taken his station, he praises the actor and at the same time looks round. Then, if anyone calls out his master's name, the slave is immediately frightened and disturbed. It is shameful for philosophers thus to contemplate the works of nature. For what is a master? Man is not the master of man, but death is, and life and pleasure and pain. For if he comes without these things, bring Caesar to me and you will see how firm I am. But when he shall come with these things, thundering and lightning, and when I am afraid of them, what do I do then except to recognize my master like the runaway slave? But so long as I have any respite from these terrors as a runaway slave stands in the theater, so do I. I bathe, I drink, I sing. But all this I do with terror and uneasiness. But if I shall release myself from my masters, that is from those things by means of which masters are formidable, what further trouble have I? What master have I still? What then? Ought we to publish these things to all men? No, but we ought to accommodate ourselves to the ignorant and to say, This man recommends to me that which he thinks good for himself. I excuse him. For Socrates also excused the jailer, who had the charge of him in prison and was weeping when Socrates was going to drink the poison, and said, How generously he laments over us! Does he then say to the jailer that for this reason we have sent away the women? No, but he says it to his friends who were able to hear it, and he treats the jailer as a child. Learn to let go, even if you are right. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. What we achieve inwardly will change outer reality. Plutarch The days that break you are the days that make you marry before thirty. Have kids before 35. Work and earn actively and sufficiently till before 40. Make passive income workable before 50. Plan to retire from work activity before 60. Do everything for family, but expect nothing from it, not even from your spouse. Letting go gives us freedom and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If, in our heart, we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Thich Nhat Hanh. Failure. Failure is an expected part of life. It's how you deal with these setbacks that determines how they will affect you. 
The key to living a stoic life is to find the successes in the midst of failure, the silver linings in a setback. It's your perspective that makes a situation either positive or negative. Whether or not you can see the good in experiences, while understanding and accepting the situation, is what will ultimately make you a stronger person. Instead of allowing detrimental situations to define you and your attitude, you must realize that as a human being, you have the ability to choose how you respond to situations and that the way in which you perceive these challenges has a tremendous effect on the quality of your life. Anyone who has suffered a great trauma knows firsthand that you cannot control or change what has happened, but you can control how you cope with the incident. Oftentimes, individuals who have been through the greatest challenges have markedly more positive outlooks than those whose lives have been comparatively easy. The goal of a life well lived is not to eliminate failure, but rather to use our failures as information and gain an understanding as to why we failed, what went wrong. When you can do that, you can alter your viewpoint, which will make it easier for you to choose how you respond in the future. Being stoic does not mean you don't feel. It simply means you are accepting your failure and choosing how to react in a way that will benefit you, rather than hinder you. Acceptance is a vital part in making the most out of your situations. Be the man you want your son to be. There is no point in being grown up if you can't act a little childish. Let us say what we feel and feel what we say. Let speech harmonize with life. Seneca Always look at where you're going, not where you've been. value you. Fear is the biggest disability of all. It will paralyze you more than being in a wheelchair. Nick Vujicic Do not demand that things should happen just as you wish, but wish them to happen just as they do and all will be well. You'll ruin your life trying to make everyone happy. If you saturate your mind with positive thoughts, it will sustain you in any situation. Know thyself, ancient Greek aphorism. Be careful who you trust. Salt and sugar look the same. Failure is only the opportunity more intelligently to begin again. Know your priorities and identify the five powerful action steps that you can take today to move you toward your goals. Jack Canfield Either teach them better if it be in thy power, or if it be not, remember that for this use, to bear with them patiently, was mildness and goodness granted unto thee. The gods themselves are good unto such, yea, and in some things, as in matter of health, of wealth, of honor, are content often to further their endeavors, so good and gracious are they. And mightest thou not be so too, or tell me what doth hinder thee? You are either part of the problem or part of the solution. Do your duty and a little more, and the future will take care of itself. Recognize that if something is humanly possible, you can do it too. 
Marcus Aurelius. He who was brave is free. Forgiving people in silence and never speaking to them again is a form of self-care. Now, if we are not fully ourselves, truly in the present moment, we miss everything. Tishnat Han. Sayest thou unto that rational part, thou art dead, corruption hath taken hold on thee? Doth it then also void excrements? Doth it like either oxen or sheep graze or feed? that it also should be mortal as well as the body. Never let others know your weaknesses. Instead, always try to show up your positives. People in ancient times did not like to talk much. They considered it a shame for themselves not to keep up with their own words. The wise adapt themselves to circumstances as water molds itself to the pitcher. Chinese proverb. Embrace every opportunity for regrets come from the chances we didn't take. You don't have to be great to start, but to become great, you just have to start. The pain of failure is nothing compared to the pain of quitting. David Goggins How magnanimity is consistent with care. Things themselves are indifferent, but the use of them is not indifferent. How then shall a man preserve firmness and tranquility, and at the same time be careful and neither rash nor negligent? if he imitates those who play at dice. The counters are indifferent. The dice are indifferent. How do I know what the cast will be? But to use carefully and dexterously the cast of the dice, this is my business. Thus in life also the chief business is this. Distinguish and separate things and say, externals are not in my power. Will is in my power. Where shall I seek the good and the bad? within in the things which are my own. But in what does not belong to you, call nothing either good or bad, or profit or damage or anything of the kind. What then? Should we use such things carelessly? In no way. For this, on the other hand, is bad for the faculty of the will, and consequently against nature. But we should act carefully, because the use is not indifferent. And we should also act with firmness and freedom from perturbations, because the material is indifferent. For where the material is not indifferent, there no man can hinder me nor compel me. Where I can be hindered and compelled, the obtaining of those things is not in my power, nor is it good or bad. But the use is either bad or good, and the use is in my power. But it is difficult to mingle and to bring together these two things. The carefulness of him who is affected by the matter, and the firmness of him who has no regard for it. But it is not impossible. And if it is, happiness is impossible. But we should act as we do in the case of a voyage. What can I do? I can choose the master of the ship, the sailors, the day, the opportunity. Then comes a storm. What more have I to care for? For my part is done. The business belongs to another, the master, but the ship is sinking. What then have I to do? I do the only things that I can, not to be drowned full of fear, nor screaming, nor blaming God, but knowing that what has been produced must also perish. For I am not an immortal being, but a man, a part of the whole, as an hour is a part of the day. I must be present like the hour, and past like the hour. 
What difference then does it make to me how I pass away, whether by being suffocated or by a fever, for I must pass through some such means? This is just what you will see those doing who play at ball skillfully. No one cares about the ball being good or bad, but about throwing and catching it. In this, therefore, is the skill, this the art, the quickness, the judgment, so that if I spread out my lap, I may not be able to catch it, and another, if I throw, may catch the ball. But if with perturbation and fear we receive or throw the ball, what kind of play is it then? And wherein shall a man be steady? And how shall a man see the order in the game? But one will say, throw, or do not throw, and another will say, you have thrown once. This is quarreling, not play. Socrates then knew how to play at ball. How? By using pleasantry in the court where he was tried. Tell me, he says, Anitus, how do you say that I do not believe in God? The demons, who are they, think you? Are they not sons of gods, or compounded of gods and men? When Anitus admitted this, Socrates said, who then, think you, can believe that there are mules but not asses? And this he said, as if he were playing at ball. And what was the ball in that case? Life, chains, banishment, a draft of poison, separation from wife and leaving children orphans. These were the things with which he was playing. But still he did play and threw the ball skillfully. So we should do. We must employ all the care of the players but show the same indifference about the ball. For we ought by all means to apply our art to some external material, not as valuing the material, but whatever it may be, showing our art in it. Thus, too, the weaver does not make wool, but exercises his art upon such as he receives. Another gives you food and property and is able to take them away, and your poor body also. When then you have received the material, work on it. If then you come out without having suffered anything, all who meet you will congratulate you on your escape. But he who knows how to look at such things, if he shall see that you have behaved properly in the matter, will commend you and be pleased with you. And if he shall find that you owe your escape to any want of proper behavior, he will do the contrary. For where rejoicing is reasonable, there also is congratulation reasonable. How then is it said that some external things are according to nature and others contrary to nature? It is said as it might be said if we were separated from union. For to the foot I shall say that it is according to nature for it to be clean. But if you take it as a foot and as a thing not detached, it will be fitted both to step into the mud and tread on thorns, and sometimes to be cut off for the benefit of the whole body. Otherwise, it is no longer a foot. We should think in some way about ourselves also. What are you? A man. If you consider yourself as detached from other men, it is according to nature to live to old age, to be rich, to be healthy. But if you consider yourself as a man and a part of a certain whole, it is for the sake of that whole that at one time you should be sick, at another time take a voyage and run into danger, and at another time be in want, and in some cases die prematurely. Why then are you troubled? Do you not know that as a foot is no longer a foot if it is detached from the body, so you are no longer a man if you are separated from other men. For what is a man? A part of a state, of that first which consists of gods and of men, then of that which is called next to it, which is a small image of the universal state. What then must I be brought to trial? Must another have a fever, another sail on the sea, another die, and another be condemned? Yes, for it is impossible in such a body, in such a universe of things among so many living together, that such things should not happen, some to one and others to others, 
It is your duty then, since you are come here, to say what you ought, to arrange these things as it is fit. Then someone says, I shall charge you with doing me wrong. Much good may it do you. I have done my part. But whether you also have done yours, you must look to that. For there is some danger of this too, that it may escape your notice. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. Be silent for the most part, or if you speak, say only what is necessary in a few words. To thine own self be true. William Shakespeare Remember that your children are not your own, but are lent to you by the Creator. Procrastination is the thief of time. Call it what you want. But one day in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful. The highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Wayne Dyer Remember, you ought to behave in life as you would at a banquet. Something is carried round and comes to you. Reach out and take a modest portion. It passes by. Do not stop it. It has not yet arrived. Do not stretch your desire towards it, but wait until it comes to you. So it should be concerning your children, your wife, your status, your wealth, and one day you will be worthy to share a banquet with the gods. If, however, you do not take these things, even when they are put before you, but have no regard for them, not only will you share a banquet with the gods, but also rule with them. By acting in this way, Diogenes and Heraclitus, and people like them, were deservedly gods, and were deservedly called so. Folks are usually about as happy as they make up their minds to be. Learn to say no without explaining yourself. The best revenge is massive success. Marcus Aurelius This quote reflects the Stoic belief in focusing on personal growth and achievement rather than dwelling on negative emotions like anger or resentment. What really ruins our character is the fact that none of us looks back over his life. He who knows and pretends not to know is on top. Who without knowledge pretends to be knowledgeable, he is sick. Your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. Eckhart Tolle To Rusticus I am beholding that I first entered into the conceit that my life wanted some redress and cure, and then that I did not fall into the ambition of ordinary sophists, either to write tracts concerning the common theorems, or to exhort men unto virtue and the study of philosophy by public orations, as also that I never by way of ostentation did affect to show myself an active able man for any kind of bodily exercises, and that I gave over the study of rhetoric and poetry and of elegant neat language, that I did not use to walk about the house in my long robe, nor to do any such things. Moreover, I learned of him to write letters without any affectation or curiosity, such as that was, which by him was written to my mother from Sinuessa, and to be easy and ready to be reconciled and well pleased again with them that had offended me, as soon as any of them would be content to seek unto me again, to read with diligence, not to rest satisfied with a light and superficial knowledge, 
nor quickly to assent to things commonly spoken of, whom also I must thank that ever I lighted upon Epictetus, his hypomnemata, or moral commentaries and common factions, which also he gave me of his own. In every situation, life is asking us a question, and our actions are the answer. Our job is simply to answer well. Recognize a problem. It's half the success in solving it. The heaviest penalty for declining to rule is to be ruled by someone inferior to yourself. Plato, the Republic. Whatever happens at all happens as it should. You will find this true if you watch narrowly. Emotion, which is suffering, ceases to be suffering as soon as we form a clear and precise picture of it. You are the eternal witness, the unchanging reality behind all experiences. Nisargadatta Maharaj As generation is, so also death, a secret of nature's wisdom, a mixture of elements resolved into the same elements again, a thing surely which no man ought to be ashamed of, in a series of other fatal events and consequences which a rational creature is subject unto, not improper or incongruous, nor contrary to the natural and proper constitution of man himself. Don't react. Cut them off silently. Everyone wants to see you succeed, but some will even go out of their way to see you fail. Deo volente, God willing, Latin phrase. Do not go broke trying to impress broke people. Avoid people who use their pain as an excuse to hurt you. For things to reveal themselves to us, we need to be ready to abandon our views about them. Tishnat Hun. in what a man ought to be exercised who has made proficiency, and that we neglect the chief things. There are three things in which a man ought to exercise himself who would be wise and good. The first concerns the desires and the aversions, that a man may not fail to get what he desires, and that he may not fall into that which he does not desire. The second concerns the movements toward and the movements from an object, and generally in doing what a man ought to do, that he may act according to order, to reason, and not carelessly. The third thing concerns freedom from deception and rashness in judgment, and generally it concerns the assents. Of these topics the chief and the most urgent is that which relates to the affects. For an affect is produced in no other way than by a failing to obtain that which a man desires, or a falling into that which a man would wish to avoid. This is that which brings in perturbations, disorders, bad fortune, misfortunes, sorrows, lamentations and envy, that which makes men envious and jealous. And by these causes we are unable even to listen to the precepts of reason. The second topic concerns the duties of a man. For I ought not to be free from affects like a statue, but I ought to maintain the relations natural and acquired, as a pious man, as a son, as a father, as a citizen. The third topic is that which immediately concerns those who are making proficiency, that which concerns the security of the other two, so that not even in sleep any appearance unexamined may surprise us, nor in intoxication nor in melancholy. This 
it may be said, is above our power. But the present philosophers, neglecting the first topic and the second, employ themselves on the third, using sophistical arguments, making conclusions from questioning, employing hypotheses, lying. For a man must, as it is said, when employed on these matters, take care that he is not deceived. Who must? The wise and good man. This then is all that is wanting to you. Have you successfully worked out the rest? Are you free from deception in the matter of money? If you see a beautiful girl, do you resist the appearance? If your neighbor obtains an estate by will, are you not vexed? Now is there nothing else wanting to you except unchangeable firmness of mind? Wretch, you hear these very things with fear and anxiety that some person may despise you, and with inquiries about what any person may say about you. And if a man come and tell you that in a certain conversation in which the question was, Who is the best philosopher? A man who was present said that a certain person was the chief philosopher. Your little soul, which was only a finger's length, stretches out to two cubits. But if another who is present, you are mistaken. It is not worthwhile to listen to a certain person, for what does he know? He has only the first principles and no more. Then you are confounded. You grow pale. You cry out immediately. I will show him who I am, that I am a great philosopher. It is seen by these very things. Why do you wish to show it by others? Do you not know that Diogenes pointed out one of the sophists in this way by stretching out his middle finger? And then when the man was wild with rage, this, he said, is the certain person. I pointed him out to you. For a man is not shown by the finger as a stone or a piece of wood, but when any person shows the man's principles, then he shows him as a man. Let us look at your principles also, for is it not plain that you value not at all your own will, but you look externally to things which are independent of your will? For instance, what will a certain person say? And what will people think of you? Will you be considered a man of learning? Have you read Chrysippus or Antipater? For if you have read Archidemus also, you have everything. Why are you still uneasy, lest you should not show us who you are? Would you let me tell you what manner of man you have shown us that you are? You have exhibited yourself to us as a mean fellow, querulous, passionate, cowardly, finding fault with everything, blaming everybody, never quiet, vain. This is what you have exhibited to us. Go away now and read Archidemus. Then, if a mouse should leap down and make a noise, you are a dead man. For such a death awaits you as it did. What was the man's name? Crinus. And he too was proud, because he understood Archidemus. Wretch, will you not dismiss these things that do not concern you at all? These things are suitable to those who are able to learn them without perturbation, to those who can say, I am not subject to anger, to grief, to envy, I am not hindered, I am not restrained. What remains for me? I have leisure, I am tranquil. Let us see how we must deal with sophistical arguments. Let us see how when a man has accepted an hypothesis, he shall not be led away to anything absurd. To them such things belong. To those who are happy it is appropriate to light a fire, to dine, if they choose both to sing and to dance. But when the vessel is sinking, you come to me and hoist the sails. One day all those late nights and early mornings will pay off. Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I'm about to criticize? Knowledge is virtue. Plato. This quote emphasizes the central role of knowledge in achieving moral perfection and a just society.
Our pleasures are shallow, our sorrows are deep. If you would know the value of money, go and try to borrow some. Your identity is a mirror covered with dust. When you first look in the mirror, the truth of who you are and what you value is obscured. Clearing it may not be pleasant, but only when that dust is gone can you see your true reflection. Jay Shetty To a certain rhetorician who was going up to Rome on a suit, when a certain person came to him who was going up to Rome on account of a suit which had regard to his rank, Epictetus inquired the reason of his going to Rome, and the man then asked what he thought about the matter. Epictetus replied, If you ask me what you will do in Rome, whether you will succeed or fall, I have no rule about this. But if you ask me how you will fare, I can tell you, if you have right opinions, you will fare well. If they are false, you will fare ill. For to every man the cause of his acting is opinion. For what is the reason why you desired to be elected governor of the Nasians? Your opinion. What is the reason that you are now going up to Rome? Your opinion. And going in winter, and with danger and expense. I must go. What tells you this? Your opinion. Then if opinions are the causes of all actions, and a man has bad opinions, such as the cause may be, such also is the effect. Have we then all sound opinions, both you and your adversary? And how do you differ? But have you sounder opinions than your adversary? Why? You think so. And so does he think that his opinions are better? And so do madmen. This is a bad criterion. But show to me that you have made some inquiry into your opinions, and have taken some pains about them. And as now, you are sailing to Rome in order to become governor of the Canossians, and you are not content to stay at home with the honors which you had, but you desire something greater and more conspicuous. So when did you ever make a voyage for the purpose of examining your own opinions, and casting them out, if you have any that are bad? Whom have you approached for this purpose? What time have you fixed for it? What age? Go over the times of your life by yourself, if you are ashamed of me. When you were a boy, did you examine your own opinions? And did you not then, as you do all things now, do as you did do? And when you were become a youth and attended the rhetoricians, and yourself practiced rhetoric, what did you imagine that you were deficient in? And when you were a young man and engaged in public matters and pleaded causes yourself and were gaining reputation, who then seemed your equal? And when would you have submitted to any man examining and show that your opinions are bad? What then do you wish me to say to you? Help me in this matter. I have no theorem, rule, for this. Nor have you, if you came to me for this purpose, come to me as a philosopher, but as to a seller of vegetables or a shoemaker. For what purpose then have philosophers' theorems? For this purpose, that whatever may happen, our ruling faculty may be and continue to be conformable to nature. Does this seem to you a small thing? No, but the greatest. What then? Does it need only a short time? And is it possible to seize it as you pass by? If you can, seize it. Then you will say, I met with Epictetus as I should meet with a stone or a statue. For you saw me and nothing more. But he meets with a man as a man who learns his opinions, and in his turn shows his own. Learn my opinions, show me yours, and then say that you have visited me. Let us examine one another. If I have any bad opinion, take it away. If you have any, show it. This is the meaning of meeting with a philosopher. Not so, but this is only a passing visit. And while we are hiring the vessel, we can also see Epictetus, 
let us see what he says. Then you go away and say, Epictetus was nothing. He used solecisms and spoke in a barbarous way. For of what else do you come as judges? Well, but a man may say to me, If I attend to such matters, I shall have no land, as you have none. I shall have no silver cups, as you have none, nor fine beasts, as you have none. In answer to this, it is perhaps sufficient to say, I have no need of such things. But if you possess many things, you have need of others. Whether you choose or not, you are poorer than I am. What then have I need of? Of that which you have not, of firmness, of a mind which is conformable to nature, of being free from perturbation. Whether I have a patron or not, what is that to me? But it is something to you. I am richer than you. I am not anxious what Caesar will think of me. For this reason I flatter no man. This is what I possess instead of vessels of silver and gold. You have utensils of gold, but your discourse, your opinions, your assents, your movements, your desires are of earthenware. But when I have these things conformable to nature, why should I not employ my studies also upon reason? For I have leisure, my mind is not distracted. What shall I do since I have no distraction? What more suitable to a man have I than this? When you have nothing to do, you are disturbed, you go to the theater or you wander about without a purpose. Why should not the philosopher labor to improve his reason? You employ yourself about crystal vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the living. You about marine vessels. I employ myself about the syllogism named the denying. To you everything appears small that you possess. To me all that I have appears great. Your desire is insatiable. Mine is satisfied. To children who put their hand into a narrow-necked earthen vessel and bring out figs and nuts, this happens. If they fill the hand, they cannot take it out, and then they cry. Drop a few of them, and you will draw things out. And do you part with your desires? Do not desire many things, and you will have what you want. Whoever wishes to keep a secret must hide the fact that he possesses one. Life isn't fair, but it's still good. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Steve Jobs Spend your first 20 years worrying what people think about you. You spend your next 20 years swearing that you don't care what people think about you. You spend the next 20 years realizing that they aren't thinking about you. Sometimes you must yield in order to win, and sometimes maintaining a low place leads you to win. Make today worth remembering. Zig Ziglar of progress or improvement. He who is making progress, having learned from philosophers that desire means the desire of good things, and aversion means aversion from bad things, having learned too that happiness and tranquility are not attainable by man otherwise than by not failing to obtain what he desires and not falling into that which he would avoid. Such a man takes from himself desire altogether and defers it, but he employs his aversion only on things which are dependent on his will. For if he attempts to avoid anything independent of his will, he knows that sometimes he will fall in with something which he wishes to avoid, and he will be unhappy. Now if virtue promises good fortune and tranquility and happiness, certainly also the progress toward virtue is progress toward each of these things. For it is always true that to whatever point the perfecting of anything leads us, Progress is an approach toward this point. 
How then do we admit that virtue is such as I have said, and yet seek progress in other things and make a display of it? What is the product of virtue? Tranquility. Who then makes improvement? It is he who has read many books of Chrysippus. But does virtue consist in having understood Chrysippus? If this is so, progress is clearly nothing else than knowing a great deal of Chrysippus. But now we admit that virtue produces one thing, and we declare that approaching near to it is another thing, namely, progress or improvement. Such a person, says one, is already able to read Chrysippus by himself. Indeed, sir, you are making great progress. What kind of progress? But why do you mock the man? Why do you draw him away from the perception of his own misfortunes? Will you not show him the effect of virtue that he may learn where to look for improvement? Seek it there, wretch, where your work lies. And where is your work? In desire and in aversion, that you may not be disappointed in your desire, and that you may not fall into that which you would avoid, in your pursuit and avoiding, that you commit no error, in assent and suspension of assent, that you be not deceived. The first things and the most necessary are those which I have named. But if with trembling and lamentation you seek not to fall into that which you avoid, tell me how you are improving. Do you then show me your improvement in these things? If I were talking to an athlete, I should say, show me your shoulders. And then he might say, here are my halteres. You and your halteres look to that. I should reply, I wish to see the effect of the halteres. So, when you say, take the treatise on the active powers and see how I have studied it, I reply, slave, I am not inquiring about this, but how you exercise pursuit and avoidance, desire and aversion, how your design and purpose and prepare yourself, whether conformably to nature or not. If conformably, give me evidence of it, and I will say that you are making progress, but if not conformably, be gone, and not only expound your books, but write such books yourself. And what will you gain by it? Do you not know that the whole book costs only five denarii? Does then the expounder seem to be worth more than five denarii? Never then, look for the matter itself in one place, and progress toward it in another. Where then is progress? If any of you, withdrawing himself from externals, turns to his own will to exercise it, and to improve it by labor, so as to make it conformable to nature, elevated, free, unrestrained, unimpeded, faithful, modest. And if he has learned that he who desires or avoids the things which are not in his power can neither be faithful nor free, but of necessity he must change with them and be tossed about with them as in a tempest, and of necessity must subject himself to others who have the power to procure or prevent what he desires or would avoid, Finally, when he rises in the morning, if he observes and keeps these rules, bathes as a man of fidelity, eats as a modest man, in like manner, if in every matter that occurs he works out his chief principles as the runner does with reference to running, and the trainer of the voice with reference to the voice. This is the man who truly makes progress, and this is the man who has not traveled in vain. But if he has strained his efforts to the practice of reading books and labors only at this, and has traveled for this, I tell him to return home immediately, and not to neglect his affairs there. For this for which he has traveled is nothing. But the other thing is something to study how a man can rid his life of lamentation and groaning, and saying, Woe to me, and wretched that I am and to rid it also of misfortune and disappointment, and to learn what death is, and exile, and prison, and poison, that he may be able to say when he is in fetters, Dear Crito, if it is the will of the gods that it be so, let it be so. And not to say, Wretched am I, an old man, have I kept my gray hairs for this? Who is it that speaks thus? Do you think that I shall name some man of no repute, and of low condition? Does not Priam say this? Does not Oedipus say this? Nay, all kings say it. 
For what else is tragedy than the perturbations of men who value externals exhibited in this kind of poetry? But if a man must learn by fiction that no external things which are independent of the will concern us for this, part I should like this fiction, by the aid of which I should live happily and undisturbed. But you must consider for yourselves what you wish. What then does Chrysippus teach us? The reply is, to know that these things are not false, from which happiness comes and tranquility arises. Take my books, and you will learn how true and conformable to nature are the things which make me free from perturbations. O oh, great good fortune, O oh, the great benefactor who points out the way. To Triptolemus all men have erected temples and altars, because he gave us food by cultivation. But to him who discovered truth and brought it to light and communicated it to all, not the truth which shows us how to live, but how to live well. Who of you for this reason has built an altar or a temple or has dedicated a statue or who worships God for this? Because the gods have given the vine or wheat, we sacrifice to them. But because they have produced in the human mind that fruit by which they design to show us the truth which relates to happiness, shall we not thank God for this? When fate hands you lemons, make lemonade. The truth is not always beautiful, nor are beautiful words the truth. A disciplined mind brings happiness, Buddha. If you waste money, you can earn it again. But if you miss the moment, it can never be returned. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. The realization of the self brings about a profound sense of peace and freedom. Nisargadatta Maharaj What Socrates answered unto Perdiccas, why he did not come unto him, lest of all deaths I should die the worst kind of death, said he, that is, not able to requite the good that hath been done unto me. You are what you believe yourself to be. Just because things could have been different doesn't mean they'd be better. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Aristotle this quote reflects Aristotle's belief that complex systems possess emergent properties that cannot be fully explained by analyzing their individual components. Experience is not what happens to a man. It is what a man does with what happens to him. You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. Abundance is not something we acquire, it is something we tune into. Wayne Dyer Against those who on account of sickness go away home. I am sick here, said one of the pupils, and I wish to return home. At home, I suppose, you free from sickness. Do you not consider whether you are doing anything here which may be useful to the exercise of your will, that it may be corrected? For if you are doing nothing toward this end, it was to no purpose that you came. Go away. Look after your affairs at home. For if your ruling power cannot be maintained in a state conformable to nature, 
It is possible that your land can, that you will be able to increase your money. You will take care of your father in his old age, frequent the public place, hold magisterial office. Being bad, you will do badly anything else that you have to do. But if you understand yourself and know that you are casting away certain bad opinions and adopting others in their place, and if you have changed your state of life from things which are not within your will to things which are within your will, and if you ever say, alas, you are not saying what you say on account of your father or your brother, but on account of yourself, do you still allege your sickness? Do you not know that both disease and death must surprise us while we are doing something? The husbandman while he is tilling the ground, the sailor while he is on his voyage? What would you be doing when death surprises you? For you must be surprised when you are doing something. If you can be doing anything better than this when you are surprised, do it. For I wish to be surprised by disease or death when I am looking after nothing else than my that may be free from perturbation, own will that I may be free from hindrance, free from compulsion, and in a state of liberty. I wish to be found practicing these things that I may be able to say to God, Have I in any respect transgressed thy commands? Have I in any respect wrongly used the powers which thou gavest me? Have I misused my perceptions or my preconceptions? Have I ever blamed thee? Have I ever found fault with thy administration? I have been sick because it was thy will and so have others, but I was content to be sick. I have been poor because it was thy will, but I was content also. I have not filled a magisterial office because it was not thy pleasure that I should. I have never desired it. Hast thou ever seen me for this reason discontented? Have I not always approached thee with a cheerful countenance, ready to do thy commands and to obey thy signals? Is it now thy will that I should depart from the assemblage of men?